Welcome to Backpacker Radio, presented by The Trek. I am your co-host, Zach Badger-Davis. Sitting to my right is... Uh, I'm Juliana Chauncey, a.k.a. Chauncey. Just their orange and no beer. We're in health mode. We're preparing for life events. Do you want to give more context, or you don't have to? Uh, sure. By the time this airs... Honestly, by the time this airs, I think it will have happened. Yeah. I'm expecting Garrett will propose in the next <laughs> month or two. You have to be careful with how long of a pause you take after you say, I'm expecting. Because if it doesn't happen, you I, don't have wanna, a baby? I don't want to look like a... Oh, I get it. I wasn't even thinking that route. No. Um, we're a not eating oranges baby. for that. <laughs> um, no, it's we're, we've just been talking timelines. And timelines seem to be like end-ish of March, beginning-ish of April. So I kind of did dry January ish asterisks bills games for fun and then decided that i would continue like moist damp damp 2024 moist yeah. 2024 this is a kid-friendly show you can't february say the i just call it a wet sandwich well february <laughs> i drank um i had a couple beers when i was in charlotte and i drank for the super bowl and I had two drinks at Girl Stuff, but like that's it. Yeah. So drastically less. Oh at, yeah, that's a lot. And less. I think it's working. That's why you've been so productive on the weekends. Oh my. <clears throat> Can we talk about last night? I was goal setting for my 32nd year around the sun. Yeah. And my brain went into like I think I have undiagnosed ADHD, and I just no one's ever been like, hey, something's up with her. She's I think weird. 2024 has turned everyone into ADHD. No, this is like life. I'm an OG um, ADHDer. Yeah. Well, third I went grade, into, baby. Third nice. grade. Oh. Oh, I went into like hyper fixating on these goals I was setting and I couldn't turn my brain off. I was up till 8 a.m. and I wasn't doing anything. I was just sitting in my bed. And every time I'd try to fall asleep, I'd have more thoughts and I'd have to like go to my notepad and so write them down. So you went to bed at 8 a.m. Monday? Today? today, this morning. So you woke up 20 minutes ago? An hour ago. Nice. Um, but I like I just laid there. I couldn't get my brain to turn off. I just yeah. kept having these thoughts and writing them down and making Google Sheets and like just crazy shit. Crazy shit. Yeah. Um, so that's got to be unregulated something, but that happens yeah. pretty frequently where I'll like get stuck on an idea and I'll just like develop a whole thing around it. And then like five days later, be like on to the next thing. Yeah. I've so. certainly done that before, but typically with not any sort of schedule conflicts. Like, I mean, you know, when it started last night, cause I started texting you. Yeah. I might have been think about around 7 PM. You oh, answered yeah, me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, we're expecting Garrett might pop a question in the next month or two. Will you be the mother of my child? <laughs> yeah, essentially that. So Chance is expecting. Yeah. I want to look so, good for the photos. So we're talking to future Chance right now. How do you feel if he didn't propose? <laughs> Honestly, I'm just going to laugh. Um, and I'm going to have some questions. Like, why did you tell me? And What are you going to do by yourself March? alone in a closet, though? Yeah. Cry me a river. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see what happens when this airs. I hope when this airs, this age as well. If it doesn't, <laughs> um, this yikes. whole thing's on Patreon. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. <laughs> Well, okay. uh, congrats to you if it happened. And, Thanks. Uh, I don't know. Either way, I think it's like being healthy is pretty good. Yeah, sure. I feel better. Yeah, <laughs> but only for a short period of time. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to sabotage all <laughs> <Yeah>. of this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before we get to today's interview, and uh, I think that surprise has been spoiled already. I didn't know it's ever a surprise when I yeah, show Yeah, actually, up. it's in the title, so yeah, you know. we pretend like it is. Gotcha. Why do uh, we do that? Yeah, we don't. We shouldn't. <laughs> A uh, few reminders. The big one, this was confirmed very recently, uh, time traveling a little bit, but we're going to be doing our first ever live episode that we are sure we'll be proud of. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. What is that supposed to mean? You know what it means. Uh, do you act like I have any shame over what happened in Wisconsin two years ago? I still have scars. <laughs> yeah, obviously that was the other. Yeah, she means episode. literal scars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the last time I broke my face. I, 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 I believe think... to this day that it was not my fault. <laughs> we can rehash that. Talk to Sir Isaac Newton about it. Yeah. Having recently brought back on Elise, she might have a different opinion. She's back. Yeah. Nice. Hey, what's up, Elise? You're not even here, but you're back. <laughs> Uh, but yes, we are locked in at the Sky Skylark Lounge on April 23rd. I believe the show starts at 6 or doors are at 6. We'll have to confirm that detail for you. But uh, if you want all of the information, that'll be available through the link in our show notes. We're trying to keep this affordable, 25 bucks per person, and uh, that's for the early bird ticket. If you wait to get it the day of, it'll go to 30 bucks. But um, yeah, we have an awesome guest already lined up. It's that that part has been confirmed for a long time, but we're going to save that as a surprise, surprise guest in a mastodon costume or <laughs> oh, something different. Yeah. yeah, totally. 
Yeah, we'll have to brainstorm on that Gotta. one. Gotta. Yeah. Uh, but I will say that this guest has been on the podcast before and was regarded very highly. People mm-hmm. really enjoyed his episode. I'm already giving away too much information. As you do. But if they're not getting blackout drunk in a costume <laughs> backstage in a kitchen, yeah. is it even really a live podcast? It's worth mentioning. Thank you for bringing that up. This is a 21 and over show only. <laughs> uh, strictly enforced. This is the Skylarx rules. So unfortunately, no kiddos. This is also on on the second floor and there's no uh, elevator stair accessible only so uh we don't check all the ada and kid boxes but your kids should not be listening to the show and we'll find a better accommodation for that second part for a future one this was uh kind of pulled together last minute but very excited for it again if you want to listen to this podcast live and in the flesh head to the link in the show notes uh, I got another note here that I'm supposed to be doing a TikTok dance because I lost our oh, bet. Oh yeah, um, yeah. But I think you know what I would absolve I would absolve you of the TikTok dance if you do the first comment in red under this is our twenty two hundred fiftieth episode. I will. Oh yeah, I'm not doing. I'll that. call that even. It's impressive <laughs> that I was here for episode one and now you're almost at two freaking 50 i can't believe it that's insane and you've yeah. been here the whole time he People hasn't even fired listening. you and you haven't like hated him or or has that uh, any of that happened no i haven't to my knowledge i haven't been fired <laughs> you what about you you've been fired i fired myself on a pretty, pretty yeah, regular basis but only because of hr violations oh yeah you're still ahead of hr <laughs> conflict of interest <laughs> Uh, so is the proposal here that I do six shots to get out of this? Well, 5.7. Okay. Yeah, I'm not doing what that. What the hell is so, that supposed to mean? Um, 250 milliliters, according to Rachel, is 5.7 shots. Understood. Yeah. So uh, shout out to the person who won the signed Tyvek. I will get that in the mail here shortly. By the time you hear this, they've already received it. Um, but super big thank you to you. Your money is going directly to Black Packers. And we did a bet on this for, just to explain the whole shots dance thing, we did a bet for whoever got closest to what the yes. sale price would be. And the furthest person has to learn, and I expect you to actually learn one well, um, a TikTok dance, and then we'll post it on our TikTok. So this is a nice little plug that if you're not following us on TikTok yet. Is it going to be only TikTok? Zach is going to work really hard on this. No. Yeah. It's going to go on all platforms. Well, let's put it on just TikTok. That way people have to go to the talk to get it. I'll agree to that if you really do try. Okay. You have to give me some suggestions. I'm not on TikTok. I'll, I'll send you a video yeah. and I'll even find one give that has options. like a broken down tutorial for you. I'm going to need some options. Okay. Because there's some directions that my body just won't go. I think that's like a cop out, but whatever. <laughs> I'm not going to make you backflip or yeah. like do anything nuts. You're yeah. not doing Can splits. you do a backflip? Yeah. Easily. No way. Enough I want to put money on this. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, I don't know how much of a plug this needs, but this is our 250th episode. Yay! Yeah. Uh, reflections on the previous 250. That's a lot of content to reflect upon, but uh, I guess it's fitting that Jabba's here for number 250. I'm as, he, as he exits the room, <laughs> he's on his he phone. He just took he's his beer and left. <laughs> he took his beer with him. <laughs> I guess maybe he'll be back. Maybe he won't. This is just fitting for how his last year went. Uh, but yeah, the first episode that we ever did was in your basement. Uh, yep. Not too dissimilar from this. We had three Apple devices with three different USB mics plugged into them. Um, and it was chaos. We had no idea what we were doing. But well, six years later, here we are. My favorite my favorite story that I always tell from that time is I was like nervous about what do you feed like Zach and Jabba. <laughs> so I got all these different craft beers for the basement fridge because I was like, I'd, like they're old, right? Like they probably drink old people beer. Um, so I got not cheap beer and you guys like looked in the fridge. You're like, do you guys have, do you have anything cheap? <laughs> we don't like this shit. <laughs> I think we ended up drinking your Natty Lights or something like they that. They were my housemates. Yeah. I went upstairs frantic and I was like, can I have your box of beer? <laughs> they won't drink this you stuff. You can drink all these craft beers. <laughs> yeah, that was the trade I yeah, made. Nice. Take them all. Nice. <clears throat> um, predictions for the next 250? Do you think we'll still be around at 500? I hope. I think at that point, you've got like four children. My kids are in college. You don't see me with, I can't push out four. I think you could probably push out four. Two, re- two sets of twins. Oh my God, imagine. Yeah. Better than quadruplets, but <laughs> that's that's luck. What's your magic number for kids? I don't know. Um, I'd like three because then if like two of them don't get along super well, they've got another option. Mm. Um, But I did read an article one time that said that four is the least stressful amount of kids to have as a parent. 
And I, it sounds... I'm going to say that's not Okay, possible. so that's the reaction I get whenever I say that. Yeah. Again, this is like an article on the internet. It could yeah. be total bonkers. But the thought process in the article was that by the time you have four, you just like stop caring about shit that you care about when you just it's have so one. so chaotic that you just give up. Yeah, exactly. So you end up being less stressed because all the stuff that you would like focus on with just one or two needing to be perfect, sure. you've kind of just let the sails down. <clears throat> It does make sense to me now how uh, my older sister was parented much harder than I was. And we just, there's just the two of us. Um, now that we've got three of our own, it's, you just have only so much fucks to give. Exactly. And you can only be so stressed out with three kids that gets watered down very quickly. But that's very expensive yeah. too. So that's a monetary concern yeah. for me. Um, uh, the, I understand that part of the argument, but also at the same time, no, I reject it. Yeah, I think that costs a lot of money, and I think I, like, I don't know, who knows, maybe I'll run out of eggs by the time yeah. I yeah. have one or two. Okay, fair enough. Jabba, do you have any predictions for the next 250 episodes of Backpacker Radio? Bloodshed. <laughs> oh, we haven't had that? Well, we've bled around blood. Yeah, Specifically you had- chances. <laughs> <laughs> you had that Foothills trail story. <laughs> oh yeah, I was thinking about my face at the last yeah. live episode. Hey, blood comes from all sorts of places, I, and specifically ginger bloodshed. <laughs> Sacrifices all, will be made. Yeah, that's all, the only option you've got here. All right, uh, let's get to our interview. No surprise here. I'm not even going to give an. What did I miss? Yeah, you can't get me up to speed here. <laughs> Tom, aka the real hiking Viking, aka Jabba. All right, what's up? You're at number two already. I felt like I wanted the drink. <laughs> I, I'm given. I'm going to give up alcohol soon yeah. for a year. Are, are oh, you sticking you to that? I am going to do my Because the complete... last time you said that, you said you would go a month, and you did. I, oh, yeah. I've yeah. done I've done, I've done. done two months before. I've done three months before. I've done four months before. I've done one month plenty of times. Um, when have you done four months? Is this when you were Four months was war? my first uh, full, like, winter, spring out of the Marine Corps. Okay. Uh, I was training for a triathlon and I was like, oh, I'm going to give it the old college try. Yeah. And I was in college at the time, so. Sure. Were you inspired by my little preamble there and that just made you want to commit? No, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, What preamble? <laughs> oh, you mean you mean you're trying to get in shape so you're not drinking? Yeah. No, I was not. That's, kinda you're, sounds stu- like you you're were. stupid. <laughs> kind of sounds right? like you were. No, I, I, I have... I, I'm getting older and alcohol only impedes my body's ability to work the way it needs to. And I've got some ailments. Uh, I've talked about it. You did the, seem a little sleepy on Saturday. Uh, yeah. Well, I was like out later drinking yeah. the night before. I'm, you know, I'm trying to get it in. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, well, I'm for, I'll be 41 in a couple of weeks. Um, actually less. What's today's date? Jesus. Fourth? Uh, in four days. Yeah. Um, to me, that's a couple of weeks at my advanced age. Um, no, I, I just, I, as an experiment, um, like mentally, physically, spiritually, like all of the above, I just want to see what, what a year of not drinking can do for me while I, you know, try and, uh, do a lot, try and, you know, see what, see what that's like in the off season, you know, not drinking the off season. Yeah. Uh, when I say off season, I mean like my adventuring off season, because typically it's totally, I, I get totally self-involved with like alcohol eating and football um from between the months of like september october yeah. and now um sounds like fun it's all the major yeah. food groups no, i just want to give it a shot just see just see what i'm you know m- missing out on on that front you know because i tend to overindulge i'm an all or nothing kind of guy yes you are i'm a pedal to the metal kind of guy what do you put the odds at after Cheating? you you're <laughs> just no just quitting altogether non-zero non-zero but likely likely going back at least dabbling here and there like yeah. i do enjoy having a good time with it yeah. um but i i just i want to see where it gets me sure that's really where it's at so yeah. um yeah i uh so I'm ha- i've got three beers in front of me i had one already i i'm going to have some more beers after this and um i i just you know gonna 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 get it in i, I like roughly or between March, my birthday, March 8th, and like me leaving for an upcoming little bike packing adventure, I, I plan to uh, pull the cord. Yeah. Cold Turk. And what's your last date of drinking? You said your birthday, but I know yeah, between, we're going out the day after your birthday. And oh, I so it'll be it'll just be between March 8th and March 13th. Got it. That'll be one of those days will be the end of it. Got it. Yeah. 
Save some money too along the way, right? Oh fuck yeah! Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. even even buying it from the liquor store or the, you know, or, or in bulk, whatever you know. Like, I, I don't go to the bar a lot, but when you do go to the bar, like before you it know adds it, up very quickly. Very I've quickly. I've stopped going out to the bar for that. Yeah. Exactly well, you moment. also have three kids. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I just drink heavily at home. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sure. Um, when no one's looking. Yeah. So that's 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 one. Re- I, I to me, I'm a little excited by the challenge of of like you know sticking to your your guns and having like you know like just um i i want to i want to like have um you know like nothing will sh- rattle me from it you know what sure. i mean i want to have that kind of mindset like you know I, when you if i'm around you and you're drinking like how easy is it for you to be like come on well so i'll <laughs> say this that i remember the last year when you took a month off uh you and i went to see jackass three yeah and then we met up with a couple buddies at the bar and afterward. i didn't drink at all you didn't drink at all and you your personality was the exact same as yeah. everybody else who was yeah. a little bit tipsy it's yeah like, is that you, when we went to 12 volt yeah or is that what it's called yeah, nine yeah, volt yeah. whatever the dive bar is in, yeah in old town uh <laughs> yeah. but no if there's one person that can get away with being in a social setting and still be the drunkest guy in the room without yeah. having Joker, any alcohol are, in their system, it's you. I, I will caveat, I do not plan to like uh, abstain from other possible, you know. Just a little heroin. Yeah, just a little <laughs> bit, you know, just to take the edge off. No, I, like like weed or whatever, like, yeah, you know, that, that, I, I'm, I'll probably supplement with some of that. Sure. Uh, edibly, though, for yeah. what it's worth. And, you know, a couple of magical mushrooms from time to time will never hurt either. So it's strictly the alcohol, which, you know, I've never done like an elimination diet, but like, I know that alcohol provides inflammatory responses to the body. I've it's not one. good for you in any way. Yeah. Yeah. I did one for a couple months and that was the, that was the hard part for me. Cause I think as people get older, like they drink less mm-hmm. in general. So there's mm-hmm. less opportunities to get FOMO. But when I was doing it, it was like mountain weekends and stuff like that. And you can't drink during it. Otherwise it fucks up the whole yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So, uh, it's just like, um, you know, uh, I, <laughs> I, I, I feel like I owe it to my body at this at this juncture for how as hard as I've been on it for all these years. Like get like maybe like do it a solid for a year and actually like, um, just be a little more conscientious of a lot of things. Sure, you know? I could see I could see it lasting longer than a year. Not maybe not yeah. completely, but sure. I feel like that's what happened to me with Dry January was. I mean, we were talking about it during Dry January where I was saying I don't really feel remarkably better. Like I don't feel. You know, but the you sun shines don't any feel brighter worse. or anything. <laughs> but it's nice not waking up the next morning feeling like shit. Yeah. And then when it's a situation where it's not going hard, <laughs> I'm kind of like you, where it's not, we're absolutely going hard tonight. Yeah. It's like, what's the point of having a beer or two? I mean, let's rewind a couple weeks. Zach and I went to Monster Jam. <laughs> oh. At the, he already, <laughs> he like, I, sh- I, I met him and a few friends at a bar near my house. And uh, the first thing I did was try and force, not try, did force like, <laughs> yeah. like six alcoholic beverages on everybody within a matter of, like six each on everybody within a matter of like 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And it, it got the night rolling in the correct, correct direction that I wanted it to go. And then I was supposed to go over to Zach's the following day day uh this was i even the- told you that night i'm like you're i'm going into this with a marathon mentality you're killing your future plans right <laughs> hey, now man, all, I'm an all or nothing kind of guy right yeah. so yeah um yeah that kind of ruined our plans the next day which by the way i was also in bed the entire day that yeah. next day as well um not for not because i needed to be but just because like i didn't once you said i'm out i was like all right i ain't doing shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I so have... that, that feeling that we had that saturday I, it's just not something that's conducive to yeah bettering one's self uh day to day and and the the older we get the harder it is to re- maintain positive forward motion on goals and 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 you know uh, achieving things, uh, you know, properly day to day. It's just, it to put those a wrench in all that shit. Yeah. No. Are you, um, also goal setting for your birthday? What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> setting goals for, your for birth- my birthday. Yeah. Like for Set, I'm uh, setting this what year, kind of goal here are the goals I want to achieve no. in the next year. No, you don't have any goals for this no, year. No, no, Not no, one. no, 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 no. He does, but they're adventure related. Yeah, we'll get well, to that. that yeah, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call it for my birthday though. Okay. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say that my birthday uh, has me thinking a specific way about goals. Yeah. Okay. I, it's uh, 41 means nothing to me. Um, if anything, it's just like I, w- I will say that, you know, with regard to age, um, and I, I think I mentioned this on this podcast before, maybe prior to my 40th birthday last year, like I have had like g- getting into this backpacking lifestyle um, back in 2013 when I 
through hiked the Appalachian Trail. Drink, <laughs> including you, fucking short round. <laughs> um, I like the my thirties were a revelation of what life could be like. Right, that first like taste of being on trail uh, on the AT in two thousand thirteen, just totally reframed my entire like view on what life for myself can be like and as for and like i just felt like my entire 30s were a gift you know just a gift of from myself to myself of like allowing me to experience life the way i had and if if there's one thing i want out of my 40s it's to to one up my 30s hmm. you know that's that you know it's not birthday related but it is age related so i would say that do you have anything in particular that you think would help to achieve that um, I mean, I have several grandiose adventure plans that would in, entail me being gone, like, um, you know, like year plus. Right after you get a puppy, you son of a bitch. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, puppy. <laughs> Listen, li- yeah, yeah. I got a little uh, Chawini. Photos. Yeah, uh, I have photo- plenty of photos. Yeah, talk and show, sure. Talk and show. So, um, I do. Wait, Polly, clip him saying I've got a little Chawini. <laughs> yeah, that we I got need. myself a little tiny Chawini. Uh, <laughs> That's for the socials. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. Ten week old. Um, it looks like baby Sierra. She, it just, totally yeah, does, no. but it's totally not. Yeah. Uh, oh. Their I'm body shape couldn't be more different. But yeah, it's basically their Ruby's body something. shape and Sierra's. <laughs> Face and skin and tone, stretched or, it out and a little bit. Tone. Yeah, yeah. Um, it looks like the slinky dog. Now, in to, Toy Story. To, to to yin and yang that the we we ha- I, we got this puppy because we had to put down a 16 year old Chihuahua mix uh, oh. the prior week. So, uh, shout out Taxi. Uh, she's she's now uh, on the long sleep and waiting to be reunited with her mom and dad later in life. Munching bacon in heaven next to Macho Man and cream puffs. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Um, you know, quite frankly, the the uh, the idea of taking a year off from drinking kind of um, pushes myself towards the uh, the the goals uh, of you know year plus type adventure. Uh, I don't know what's gonna which one's gonna be the one that I that I you know decide to lean in on, um, but my body is required at a high level to to operate on that kind of a, an adventure, and and I and I I've. I have not done some things in the last couple years that have uh, lent itself, lent, lent themselves to, to my body being um, reliable over the course of a, of a long adventure. Uh, the last couple years, uh, some wrenches have been thrown into the spokes, into yeah. the gears of, of some of my adventures. You know, like t- two years in a row, these last two years, I have attempted to re-hike the CDT and both years, those efforts have failed for various different reasons. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I have to get my shit straight in order to be able to do some of these larger, grandiose plans, uh, adventure plans. In my yeah. Do future. you think that comes like? Do you think that correlates to things like not drinking? Like that will remedy those. Things? I think it, I think absolutely it plays a role at, at the very least mentally, but I'm sure physically, absolutely there will be there's fallout from the, a lifestyle of enjoying you know libations a little too heavily from time to time. Now I'm not like a <laughs> for the record, I'm not like a, I'm not a problem drinker. I swear to <laughs> fucking God, um, I cracks two more. I, I, and and to be to be truthful, I have bit had problems with alcohol prior to my time in service, uh, mainly between the ages of 14 and 22. Um, I fourteen would, was a tough year. Fourteen for the was a tough year. <laughs> no, I mean, it, I just I abused alcohol heavily in. in in ways that somebody of those ages shouldn't. Now th- that that that's the all or nothing me that had no guardrails. Um, guardrails exist a little bit more so now, and you're yeah. you're thankful for that. Let me tell you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's saying something because you've seen me at a, a high I, clip. I, I've definitely seen you guardrailless in my yeah. life many times. <laughs> my version, yeah. my current version at the times of guardrailless, yeah, yeah, but yeah. the ver- the version of me guard guardrailless before you knew me would be like run for the hills. Sure. <laughs> um, so I do think that there is a correlation. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that'll look like. Cause like I said, it's like an experiment. I don't know what, what positives I will glean um, from it physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. So you mentioned injuries over the last couple of years. We'll do a run through of your last CDT hike. Sure, yeah. But before we did do that, uh, I want to know why did you disappear? Oh man, first of all, it's not like it's a secret. Every year I disappear around the same exact time. Yeah. I just 
fucking this was the first year where i got several messages from people on instagram being like is java around is he alive is he okay i was just about to bring that up we, i was fielding backpacker radio dms sure. that were like hey just checking in did java die like serious <laughs> messages I, I am, i'm like i don't think so i am o overwhelmed by the you know interest in wanting to know if i'm alive or if i'm dead um <laughs> <laughs> i i i it's it's a very interesting to have your uh, life, your, at least your adventure life on social media. Um, if you were to like put like an arc of, of my like posting over the years, like from 2014 when I first got an Instagram uh, before my first CDT hike, um, like I was like ramping up my my own love of social media posting and engagement. Like there's a giant arc that like, you know, it, it, it's ascending, you know, in, to infinity. And then all of a sudden, at some point, I would say in like 2018 or 19, like it started, it finally took its first like dip. Yeah. Where I was like, eh, like <clears throat> I don't care as much. I remember you and I had a blast with Instagram during our PCT oh, hike. Yeah. And yeah, it's gone steadily downhill for me. Uh, yeah. And like pretty quickly too. Well, uh, you know, I, I've never like self reflected too heavily on the why. I have some uh, ideas on the wh why those things are. One is just like you get burned out. Sure. Mm -hmm. Like you know you've been you've been uh, you've been you know vocal on social media for so damn long, and yeah. it's definitely like you know I've reaped every benefit under the sun, maybe more than uh, a, a lot of other through hikers out there. Um, I like to think I like to say that I was like part of like a, a the through hiker gold rush at an early day in terms of like uh, social media in terms, of, in terms of accruing followers sure like a gold rush of accruing followers yeah and interest um, and then once Instagram Instagram does play a role in this too in terms of how the the follower base and is able to engage with you and once that algorithm took a turn like you, you just you feel like like it's not even worth it to 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 like post as much because like they are blocking the majority of your followers from your posts so you're just like why do i care as much as i used to when i would get like you know like five six seven thousand people seeing a story or like four thousand likes on a post you know obviously like you know numbers don't like that don't mean everything but like in terms of um, your your time investment in posting, if, if if Instagram is like dicking around with that and and not allowing your follower base to see that shit, then you just you know inherently start caring a little less. Mm -hmm. um, at least me personally, I can say that, and I'm sure some of the people could agree with that. But also, I think you know, like I said, the burnout factor of it. Um, also, like some of my uh, like uh, adventures and goals didn't always like get completed or you know and and that like has in and of itself its own um you know effect on if if and when i'm posting so but but as far as last year goes um and i know we want to talk about some of the stuff in the patreon so i, I i'm you and, don't have to withhold anything yeah sure so i had i did a flip-flop on my cdt last year um and it at uh what's it called the town before chum up uh gosh what's uh, ghost ranch um i got off trail at ghost ranch and was gonna do a, did a flip up from ghost ranch because there was a lot of snow in northern new mexico and uh southern colorado and i was like uh screw it i'll just flip up and, and hike south but then when when i got through the wind river high route going southbound um i uh had the opportunity to go be on Deal or No Deal Island, which just aired the first episode. Wait, are you on that? Because um, I've been getting the ads for that show. I was a no, I was not on the show. Oh. I was an alternate. I was down there for several. Or I, th I forget how long it was. Um, uh, and if like a contestant that was scheduled to be like you know what is on the show, if they like you know dropped out, got sick, because you know it was down in Panama and like people were getting dengue fever and stuff like that, or malaria or whatever, getting sick. Uh, if somebody had to drop out, I was an alternate that would have been subbed in. Um, so I was down there and and I knew going down that I was going to be an alternate. I just you know it was a paid vacation as far as I was concerned uh, to to uh, Bocas del Toro, which is like an archipelago off the um, like northern northeastern coast of uh, of Panama, if I remember correctly. Um, so I ha had signed an agreement to like not talk about any of that stuff, and so I couldn't. I didn't even like. But I, the funny thing is, that I didn't like 
care about saying like, hey, I'm getting off of the CDT. Yeah. I just went dark. Yeah. And then when, when I came back, I just moved on with my life. I didn't like, I didn't continue on the CDT. I just like dove into like my, my other podcast for college football and, and just like enjoyed my life outside of through hiking and outside of adventuring and, and just moved on. And I yeah. just didn't care. And, and I, and you know, it's just easy to <laughs> keep a blind eye to the fact that people are like, what the hell happened? <clears throat> you yeah. went dark dude. Cause <laughs> in the past you've been very vocal and forthright and transparent when something doesn't go according to plan, yeah, like explaining sure. what happened. Yeah. So I don't imagine your going radio silent has to do with you wanting to avoid that. But it was. I just didn't care. Yeah. I just didn't care. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I just, I just didn't care. Yeah. Like that's that is the short of it. Um, you know, and and probably you know, deep in the recesses of my mind, maybe it's also because you know, to be perfectly honest with you, it was not an easy decision to say. You know, I have I had already invested you know a lot of time and miles in the CDT, and I was hell bent on like finishing my CDT hike, particularly because the year before I didn't finish it. Now I did go off, go on to hike in 2020 or bike in 2022, 5,000 miles. So I did complete something, but like my initial goal the prior year was to hike the CDT and then bike the continental divide back down and do a big yo-yo of from Mexico to Canada and back. Um, totally changed up, you know, like I said, but, but so to hike the CDT last year was like, I wanted to get, you know, my CDT hike under my belt and I'm, I hate not completing something. And so there was probably a part of me that was like, okay, well I've get, I, I'm giving up on my, you know, goal of hiking the entire CDT and I'm going to, you know, roll the dice and see if I get on this show. Um, and when that, when I, you know, let go of the CDT, I just let go of all of it. Like I mm-hmm. let go of even the thought of, you know, talking about it. And mm-hmm. I just like, it was just like, stuff it in a corner, put it in a box, like whatever, just walk away from it entirely. And so that's basically the gist of it. And, and as I was alluding to, to, as as I was alluding to in the recess of my recesses of my mind, maybe it's just easier. Like I said, I'm an all or nothing guy. So that was the nothing, like put it away. It's done all or nothing. And I'll walk away from it without feeling anything about it. Was there any part of you that toyed with getting back on the CDT when the show didn't happen? Um, yeah. And I, to be perfectly honest, I do regret not going back and, and attempting to continue hiking. Um, cause there is always that, like, um, the shit, the, the through hiker blues, right? There's mm-hmm. always that part of you that like misses that life. And, and then you just, and then I just got sedentary, uh, for lack, for lack of a better way of putting it. I mean, I wasn't like working out. I wasn't, um, you know, training for anything. I wasn't on the trail and, uh, you know, just started like eating whatever I wanted, drinking whatever I wanted and doing whatever I wanted on, you know, and, and that never lends itself to like positive, um, emotional state, sure. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, uh, at least compared to being on trail. Yeah. You know? So yeah, it's, it's, it's tough to let go of, of something you already have, you know, a lot invested in like personally, but also like business wise too, you know? How do you pull yourself out of those like periods of the blues where you're not eating good, you're not exercising, you're you know like things are just a completely different way for you? How do you get back into the swing of things with things I, like that? I am like <laughs> I, every year come January, I just completely like turn flip a switch, and and I know it's coming. Like I know like okay, as much as I feel like I'm not like you know doing various things that are like bettering myself right now. I know that after the new year, like I will flip a switch cause I have to get myself physically prepared for the, the rest of the, the year that I, I want to have. So, so I know there's a light at the end of the tunnel eventually for me personally. Like I, I just, I, I've created a life um, where um, I, you know, I don't have a nine to five. And so I have the time, I have ample amounts of time to, to leaning into being a, a basically a workout junkie. And since like, I don't know, maybe the first or second week of January, that's what I've been doing nonstop every week is just like, I don't know, a lot of grueling, but, you know, personally enjoying training for me. When you go on these lulls, <clears throat> like the post trail blues, uh, as I get it every year. Yeah, I yeah. get it every year. No, I, I, I've seen that. And, and I keep thinking every year that I'm going to do something different. Yeah, yeah. Coming out <laughs> off an adventure, and I never fucking do. Well, so and that's, that's why I want to stop drinking because I think 
it might ha pl have the effect that I want it to have with being mentally like clear and coming off of an adventure and like l continuing to lean in on my health. Yeah. But well, go on. I guess as part of my question is, is there, is any part of the reluctance to get back into the grind because your expectation is so severe in terms of how hard you work out like your gym sessions are like four to six hours <laughs> what if what if you just go to the gym for like an hour or four never, five minutes like, never do you think because you set such I a high from, standard like, the for marine yourself? corps where like your whole lifestyle is built around being physically active all day long yeah i mean we do have like classes and we do have like educational periods and stuff too but like like I want my body to be prepared for the volume of work that I put th put it through when I'm on adventure. I totally understand that. And I'm not saying that you should scale back your training, but oh, what I, I am saying is that in the I off season, dad. when you, when you get into these funks, do you think it would potentially be beneficial to like, I mean, just lower I, the bar okay, a little bit I, in that, in that context, it makes sense, but it, but it, but I have such a, like a, like a mental uh, fixation on what it feels to put in work. Yeah. What, what, like, like how do I, do I feel accomplished at the end of a workout? Like, so I feel you're like worried I'm that you would show up to the it. gym if you only work out for an hour that you would be half-assing it. Yeah. 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 That doesn't feel like anything to me. Yeah. Can you walk me through, and I like, and I mean in detail, how do you spend six hours at the gym? Like, I, I well, personally, I, I want to know what you're doing. Well, it's not, it's not minute. like it's like six hours of like lifting or like, right. So walk so, me through okay. it. Okay. So like on a, on a, on a day where I'm putting forth like anywhere from like, like two, like 2000 plus calorie day, uh, like, and sometimes it's 3000 plus calorie day, which by the way, I'm like 235 pounds. So I like burning calories for a guy, my size is different for you burning cal. Like if you did the same workout as me you would not burn the same amount of calories you're as so me. Strong. you don't have as much you're body so to be moving right <laughs> um you're so strong um <laughs> so uh like tip a typical day for me would be like um anywhere from like 60 to ideally 90 minutes of strength training and i have a i have this is this is going to be boring to a lot of people i'm sure but um are you all your episodes there? yeah no doubt uh they're your least viewed and listened to episodes i've heard um the so like i have a three-day strength upper body strength day sorry strength training uh day rotation so like um let's just start monday monday would be like um chest and triceps um and then wednesday would be biceps and shoulders and then friday would be um back all right and then in between those days um are um legs and core on those on those other those lower body and core days um and so 90 minutes of that every day and then i try and get like uh and sometimes it, it's two hours of strength training it just depends on on how many like sets I want to do and how how high the reps are per set so sometimes I'm doing like six sets of 20 reps uh depending on what um you know I'm feeling that day and I scale that up or down depending on how my body feels yeah I know not to derail this but I know That's at one fine. point you were working with a coach Is, yeah are you still Palace. um I'd like to be um I it it was hard I wanted I wanted to this year it was just I was in such a funk I, I just never got um like up with them once January came around at the idea. I tried to multiple times in the, in the fall and I just didn't have them. I wasn't there mentally. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you have to be, to me, you have to be there mentally with that um, particular type of training. Cause it's a, it's varied and it's hard and it's a lot of, um, it's a better way of working out. No doubt. Like the, the type of training I've been doing this, this off season has been very traditional. Um, I, I do what I know. I do what I've always done and known. Um, and we'll see what kinds of results that this bears, but I ideally this, yeah, this company called palace P A L L A S. Um, the, the owners, uh, husband and wife, um, they're both like remarkable people in their own right. Megan and Andy Markoff. Um, Andy was a, um, uh, special operations, uh, Marine, uh, officer. Uh, he was a Raider battalion. Uh, I mean, the, the elite, the elite of the elite Marines. Um, and his wife is like, uh, competition triathlete competition crossfitter uh and she's like a health nutritionist and, and all that kind of stuff and she knows her shit and both of them know what they're doing they actually live down in colorado springs and they work with a lot of olympic athletes down there and um 
fortunate enough that they have given me their time uh, for free um, and, I, and obviously in exchange for some, um, you know, marketing here and there. Um, I'd l ideally, that, that is the way I'd like to go because they, they can make my body guess and, and, and work on like joint mobility a lot more. And that's definitely what I need more than probably anything. Um, but, but, but I'm, you know, I'm the pick things up, put things down kind of guy at heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, and it didn't necessarily totally derail the conversation, but um, I, I, it's probably more efficient and effective to do what, what they have had me do in the past than, than for me to do what I'm doing now. But, but I can, I can certainly like do the volume that I'm doing still is, is not for nothing. You know what I mean? Well, so that, that's what I want to talk about is because for me personally, the thing that has been the most jarring for trying to stay fit over the last few years is the fact that I have to limit my volume based on my ability time. to recover well, oh. time oh, actually yeah, time yeah. is probably the more yeah yeah limiting factor but also there are times where like i feel like i'm pushing myself beyond the point of it being productive well so that's called plateauing right you know like you're, like yeah, if, you, if also, you're not able to get better um you know <clears> with <throat> your training it's because you aren't allowing your body to recover properly. Yeah. And, and I know you, you get, have problems with sleeping. That's for sure that we're better there now, but, uh, also just getting older. I you're going to cramp my forearm as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like when I think you're, you're in your twenties, the limiting factor is just like your willingness to put in hard work yeah. and your diet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it gets to a certain point around my age, your age, where I feel, uh, yeah, I feel like, Not uh, mine. yo, piece of shit. <laughs> old fucks. <laughs> what are you, 32? The old bag. Oh, what are you? Not yet. March 14th. Ah, that's 32. pretty close though. Yeah. So, you know, shut up. I like birthday kids almost. <laughs> I think that. Wait, when's your birthday? March 14th. I'm, I'm the 8th. So we're close. We're Pisces worry. babies. What? Yeah, Pisces. Very is emotional. that it? Pisces pals. But you're not emotional, I don't think. You don't know that. Yeah, maybe you just mask really well. Big time, baby. <laughs> That's what the beard's for. <laughs> yeah. I got my, my beard is my beard. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like even if I didn't have kids right now, I wouldn't be able to work out as hard. Like, I wouldn't be able to do the PCT in 100 you're, days. Yeah. I, well, you really think you think so? I think it would be not that far off if I push myself to the limit, but I just I just feel like I'm not recovering as well hmm. after a workout as I was I, even I, five years I, ago. I The only times where I feel like I'm not recovering – um as quickly um i could the volume that i do does not like preclude me from being able to hit it again the next day hmm. but on days where i hit like squats heavy yeah that puts me in a in a like a deficit uh in a good way in my it, the way i experience it in a good way but it certainly it takes away from my ability to do the volume at the clip that i want to the next day yeah um so <sighs> oh my gosh you guys there's a review. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I guess to bring this full circle is because uh, I know that was well, well. Hold on, I'll get back. I never finished her question. What, what was, was question? it? Well, I didn't even get through. The, you said <laughs> how does four to six hours sound? And I oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, So so like anywhere between ninety and uh, one hundred and twenty minutes is spent strength training. And Describe like dumb it down for me. What do you mean strength training? What are you doing? Like like I said, those three those three upper body days that I do like every other day, and that so like that that I'll spend ninety minutes to two hours a day okay. doing any one of those groups. Got it. Show, bu uh, uh, triceps and, and chest. Then the next you know Tuesday will be legs and core. Shoulders, Wednesday back. will be shoulders and biceps. Pussy, then then legs and core, and then um, back, and then the next day legs and core again. So that's like a six day rotation of strength training. All right, and then I'll t as far as strength training goes, I'll take the seventh day off. But every day, ideally, I'm getting at least two hours of cardio along with that right after the strength training. Straight through, just like yeah, running, just, walking. Yeah, I'll, well, I'll, I'll vary it depending on like I want to get like a good. What, a variety of cardio because I want to bike this year. I want to hike this year. So I'll, I'll do anything from um, running to walking on an uh, incline to Stairmaster to cycling. And right now I'm doing a lot more cycling than anything um, to let's see what else am I doing? Yeah, that's it, I guess. Um, yeah. So are you trying to stay in a certain heart rate zone? Yeah. I mean, ideally uh, above 130 um, BPMs, but like uh, depending on the how I'm feeling, like I'll, 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 average over 150 BPMs for like uh, a, a one to two hour session, depending on um, 
depending on how how well I've recovered, quite mm-hmm. frankly. Um, but then after that, I will head to like Denver Sports and Recovery, and I'll spend um, you know time there where I'm like you know doing stretching sessions in a sauna, which is hard work. You know, have you ever spent thirty minutes stretching in a sauna? Depends on the temperature of the sauna. I mean, one hundred and seventy plus. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. I, it's I'm, tough. I'm usually just like hunched over in a ball. Yeah. So that, to but I, I utilize that to to do the my stretching because fuck, I like I'm I need to stretch. Like I like I have to stretch or I will have te- I'll get tendonitis. I'll get overuse injuries later down the road because I haven't lengthened my muscles and you know soft tissues. Uh, seems like an obvious answer, but you're not naked in these saunas, are you? You're not. Or I'm not. I am. <laughs> you are. So Dick you're out. in a public sauna no, never. stretching. Of course not. Yeah, I'm always in a public setting. I'm definitely not naked. Um, that's hysterical. I mean, we should normalize it. Um, <laughs> the previous gym that I was at, that was normal for sure. Yeah? It, especially if you're, Prestige? Over the, if you're over the age of 50. Prestige? Yeah. Getting na- is, but it's a, is it a male-only yeah, sauna? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that's, oh, okay. that's a little I'm different. picturing a male-only. No, I'm I, separate I, it's been a locker hot rooms. minute since, I'm, since I've done a male-only sauna. Um and I do mean hot. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so so that I could spend anywhere up to two hours at DSR and like find find ways of keeping my heart rate up. You know what I mean? Like I- even though it's like recovery, like there there's still like difficulties like built into that too. You know what I mean? So so at the end of the I mean there's I mean I probably had a week uh, a couple weeks ago where where. At, I probably did like seven days where every day was a, was 2,500 calorie burn, active calorie burn. It's and and right now I'm starting to like taper a little because next week I'm leaving for a bikepacking trip. So I've like I'm trying to keep my heart rate down a little bit more and do a little bit less volume on that front so that I can feel fresh when I start. Easy transition. Where are you going next week? Um, it, it's kind of in flux at this juncture, but my buddy Doozer, who I've talked about in the past, um, he. Uh, it was the, the, the one that, uh, he lives up in Boulder. He's a uh, bikepacking YouTube personality. He's the man. Um, and his full name is Ryan Van Duzer, if you want to follow him. he His YouTube is, I think, just Ryan Van Duzer. But um, he and I want to do maybe like anywhere from like five to eight days bikepacking, anywhere from like a few hundred miles to like five 500 miles, something like that. Um, and ideally down in New Mexico. But we're kind of tossing around some, some other other routes that aren't maybe in New Mexico it just depends on how how it shakes out but we're definitely going to do something um TBD on what exactly that is but um and that's like that'll bleed into um like I'll come back from that uh and start training to I think back or backpack the GET um the Grand Enchantment Trail. You guys have heard of that, mm-hmm. right? I'm, yeah. sure, I'm sure. Uh, it's about 800 miles. That that would be my ideal uh, uh, b- backpacking adventure after that. Um, but I'll be at CDT kickoff before that uh, down in Silver City, New Mexico. Um, I know you guys were hoping to be when there, but now you're not going. It's a- uh, April. I right? made the unilateral decision. <laughs> yeah, it's, I don't know if we've decided it's anything. It's mid-April, but uh, yeah. We it's didn't. like April. It's like over the over the 420 weekend. Yeah. So you guys are doing your thing right after that. Uh, I probably can't get it off uh, due to the other trail Zach days. Zach can't get off. You heard it here first. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, Zach's got a very, very uh, intense manager. Yes, he does. <laughs> Three of them, actually. <laughs> Four. 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 Yeah. Four. Yeah. I guess if you want to throw Sierra in. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't want to focus too much on what's ahead because sure. I know things change. I want to talk about let the last year. Sure. So... <clears throat> um, Let's just jump right into your start on the CDT. Yeah. What sort of cannon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out of a cannon yet again. That, that was the <laughs> theme because you knew the previous year that you had to throttle back your effort and you ended up getting injured because you got shot out of a cannon. I actually was pretty fine on the CDT starting out this year. Yeah. Like I had no major issues on the CDT starting out this year, um, from what I can recall. Let's give the context, though, because the previous year, yeah, yeah, yeah. you made it your goal to not shoot yourself out of a cannon, and, then and you did, did. Immediately. and then you got hurt. <laughs> yeah, I, I got some uh, anterior uh, tib, um, uh, t- like t- tendonitis. Uh, and, and on the, <laughs> yeah, God, it sucks. Um, the and I've not like I think I've I've had I've had tendonitis in my anterior tib many times throughout my hiking career. Um, never was it bad enough that it, like stopped me like on trail. Like 
day, like day to day or anything like that. Um, but like, it's, I started out doing like 25 ish miles a day on the CDT t two years ago. And by the time I got to Grant, New Mexico, which is roughly like officially the fi 500 ish mile mark, um, depending on the route you take, um, it, it would, and it just happened to coincide at the same time with all these like massive fire closures in 2022. Um, and so I, I just, it kind of worked perfectly. Cause I was like, I shouldn't keep walking right now. Um, and everybody else was like road walking up to Chama. And I was like, well, first of all, fuck that. Cause road walking hundreds of miles sounds stupid. 350 miles <clears throat> of the CDT roughly were closed, um, uh, between Grant, New Mexico and the Colorado border. Um, the two biggest fires in New Mexico state recorded history were raging at that time. And, and they had to shut down all the national forests cause they didn't have the bandwidth uh, and the resources to be able to combat another fire, uh, moving forward. Um, and so that was when I just made the decision like, okay, my, uh, te my ligaments, tendons, whatever in my, um, tendons in my lower feet or lower legs are like seizing up essentially. Like, have you ever had tendonitis in any of your like lower extremities? No, it starts. You literally can like hear them creaking, hmm. like as you flex your foot, you could put your, you could put <laughs> Elise actually was there the day that I quit. Uh, well, the day that I, I, I took a extended time off when I stayed with that old woman in yeah. that motel Yeah, um, for a week. Marmot was her name. <laughs> yeah. For, I mean, I, we were together for multiple days and then I was, I took a full, a little over a full week off. Uh, and then I hiked up to grant and I, and it, when I got to grant, it was just like too painful still. Um, so like you could put your, your hand on the ligament while I flex my toes up to my knee and you could like literally feel it's like leather. It's like leather grinding yeah. against other leather is yeah. what it feels like. Mm. And sound and sounds like you can literally like hear it as, as, as well as feel the vib vibrations of it. Um, so that was my first, like that, that's probably more like tendinopathy, which is like the more egregious version of tendinitis. Um, and is that, just purely a cause of over overuse yeah. overuse for sure overuse without like proper recovery mm -hmm. and, and it keep it happens it has happened it happened to me down there because of how flat that terrain is mm -hmm. and i didn't train for flat terrain and then but <clears throat> but so so that's when i switched to the biking all right and then i got achilles tendonitis too with the overuse biking too because i am a fucking idiot and i just don't know how to like say no to like all out exertion um because i still have this mentality that i'm like a 30 year old like superstar like physically because i i mean you know my time in the marine corps like i was always at the top of like every physical like challenge every like physical fitness test i was always like knocking everything out of the park and just um so i just my whole life is you know it is you know fortified the fact that i have been a very good athlete um and and it's weird to not be able to do the things you think you can do right so do you have any mental spiraling around that yeah can you, can you walk can you walk me through that the idea like i mean shit you're out there in the middle of nowhere you're walking without the ability to do to walk without pain you're, you're you know like you, you get to the point where you're just like what the fuck is wrong with me like why like do i have am i like you're going back and forth trying to rationalize either continuing or rationalize quitting it, like in every moment and every step. So yeah, the spiraling exists in both directions. Like, you know, you, you, you're stubborn that you, you're going to keep going or you have to pull the plug and, and quit, you know? And it's like, like both are devastating. <laughs> both, both directions are devastating to, to, to the idea of what you're trying to accomplish. I mean, like, let me clarify a little bit more. We're talking about age a lot. And as we get older, yada, yada is a lot of the theme of what's coming up right now. Is there any like spiraling around like the reality of your mortality or anything like that as your body is no longer a 30 year old? Uh, I don't think it's, I don't think I'm quite there with the idea of like the, the like the mortality idea of like, well, like death. Um, like that's not there yet. Like just like your forefront. body, like slowing down a bit. I don't think my body's like, I don't think my body has to slow down. I think, I think the way that I treat it has to change. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, I, I think I'm still capable of doing everything that I think I can, but the way that I get there has to alter. Yeah. All right. You know, and, and I need to like tinker to figure out exactly what the best method is. I mean, the, some of the most elite athletes that are, that are out there 
grapple with this as well. You know, they grapple with with their own version of how they they you know every every champion ultra runner comes to the point where they can't do what they used to do, right? And I'm not that, but I am. I was I whatever it is for me. I have I'm grappling with the idea of what I was and how I continue in the in a manner that still is gratif- gratifying to me. You know, still fulfills like fills my cup when I'm out there because because I really just want to like push push push, and and I think I can still do it the way that I have. I just think I need to find a different way to do it. Um, <clears throat> so you mentioned obviously quitting booze. What else would that entail? Um, I think it probably involves a a very regimented like joint mobility. T- uh, training mm-hmm. um, and, and, and the way I see it the way I see this year going is like is like okay quit drinking alright definitely don't shoot yourself out of a cannon when you get, get to whatever you're trying to do fingers crossed um, you know I'll just puke on myself and start running um, that's basically <laughs> what I end up happening um, I mean that's that's an analogy. I'm not really gonna puke at myself and start running. Um, it's a waste right. of good calories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Eats true. it back up. Uh, <laughs> but um, I I really feel like um, if I can you know tackle the, the I have a lot of these smaller goals this year that aren't like I and I do, I think you there do is, have goals. I, they're not forty. I they're not it. birthday related. Whatever. I, you asked if they're birthday goals. related. <laughs> of course, there's always goals, you know, <laughs> but they have nothing to do with my birthday. Um, so I really feel like these, uh, these smaller mission, these smaller goals, if I can get through this summer and feel accomplished and at least, you know, check off some of these things. Um, and there is a world where I do go back and finish the CDT this year. Uh, I'm not sure it'll work out, but we'll, we'll see. Um, I think coming out this year, like if I want to be what I want to be and do what I want to do, you know, next year and beyond in my forties, I think this is a pivotal, like transitional off season for me, like coming out of my last adventure, whenever that is in late summer, early fall, whatever it is, like if I don't take the momentum that, that I've, um, you know, accrued throughout this adventure year, if I don't take that and build off of it, then I'll never do it. <clears throat> and, 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 and I just, I'll have to like, like, like craft my daily life around the idea that I need to make my body like better. Sure. Uh, do you want a method that I had think? Is... I'm open for suggestions. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So steaks, I think steaks are a huge thing. <laughs> And stating them. Do you mean like tent steaks or like, or like meat? Oh, I thought you were telling him to cut out red meat. No. <laughs> I thought you were telling me to I eat red meat. Hard. You got to go on the carnivore diet. No, no, no. What I'm saying is. Liver king. Set yourself, set yourself a goal. Testicles and, only. And I would encourage you to make it on the more obtainable side. Don't, especially if we're talking off season, like there needs to be. But if I shoot, Wait, for, the, if I shoot for the stars <laughs> or shoot for the moon, then I'll land amongst the. <clears throat> Where are tent stakes fitting into this? He's not steaks. talking. It's not just steaks in general. Yeah, it's spelled the same as tent steak. Yeah, with the other <laughs> it's not oh. a tent steak. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, tent steaks aren't gonna fix yeah. getting off the CDT. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, Var- Vargo titanium tent steaks will help me. <laughs> so, for instance, if you had a goal for what you wanted to achieve this off season, is there like a certain number of hours of exercise per week that you're looking at? Like, I don't, I don't think what, of it in terms of that. I so, just so like, what does your ideal off season look like? I guess. Uh, it, it's. It, <laughs> I want I want to make my joints buttery. Okay, that's where like I have lower back issues yeah. that, that stem from degenerative disc disease that I've been grappling with since late 2019. Um, somehow my knees are completely fine, but like feet and everything stemming up from the foot, so lower lower leg, all of that, my hips, my back. Um, my pussy and my crap. <laughs> <laughs> Sean said it. All right. <laughs> we um, were all thinking it. <laughs> uh, I tried I, saying it earlier. I, I, no I, heard I, me. I, I need to, I need to lengthen and like loosen my body. Like I just, yeah. I have to. So what would, it, what does that look like? Probably dropping forty pounds is part of it. <clears throat> so I mean, is that a goal of the off season? I mean, to stay... ideally, I mean, I don't care about like literally what I weigh. Yeah. Like I'm perfectly happy being two hundred thirty five pounds. Like as far as like I, I'm, I don't look in the mirror and hate myself or anything like that. But 
in terms of what my body probably should be working with from time to time, you know, like from adventure to adventure, 235 pounds is not like good for me at this stage. Sure. You know? So let's finish this thought experiment. So maybe in this scenario, you said- That's not, Zach. I feel like we're in an intervention. (laughs) (laughs) Self-intervention, self-intervention. We brought you here to talk about your health. (laughs) No, no, no. It's it's everything. I mean- What I'm trying to do is he's saying that this is a goal that he's had every off season, but he hasn't been able to hold it. So I'm trying to implement a, a strategy that would help him achieve this. And so you're, what I'm hearing is a big part of it would just to be stay under a certain body weight. We can set whatever number that is. I mean, it's not, that's not the, like the, the body weight isn't the goal. I just know that less will be more at, the, at this stage in my life. Yeah. But without having some sort of uh, metric that you're actually pursuing, this is going to be, obese. this is going to be impossible. Like <laughs> yeah. if it's a moving sure. target okay, okay. of just that's like fair. feeling good, that's fair. this is going to be an impossible yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 so yeah. Y- either you have to set like a goal base weight that you don't go above a certain number, or you spend X hours per week doing yoga. We could set, we yeah. can make this for anything. I should be doing <laughs> yoga. I stretch every morning, but it's not enough. I think like I need I need those types of things like I need a regimented day yeah that's just built around the idea of bettering my body so for instance let's just say that your goal was to do two hours of yoga this upcoming off season sure. when you get back yeah, yeah. from your adventure we'll call it the fall we'll say fall yeah fall in the fall you want to do a minimum of two hours of yoga per week and you want to stay below 230 let's just let's just throw out those numbers like like realistically below 210 okay right whatever number you want to be uh and if you don't hit either of those goals the stakes would be we could set any number of things but uh, i hear how much you hate social media the stakes could be that if you don't do either of these things in a given week or for every day that you're above your goal base weight you have to do a dance on tiktok and you oh my God. every you're single day i have to get a tiktok you have to download tiktok and you have to post <laughs> a, a new dance every single day that you don't achieve this goal i don't so, love this <laughs> i get where he's going it, it's got to be something I that motivates you to avoid the yeah because because you, there, you, you hate it there, there's got to be a stick yeah. i see where you're going with it but having had an eating disorder for me just like hearing you talk about this is like this would be terrible for me like sure. if you were and not everyone's the same but right. like you get to places starting How about somewhere Zach and, and if it was this is, and if, me out this is if I were to be making like punishments for myself if I wasn't below a certain weight by a certain time like that is the start of an absolute spiral we're talking to Viking right now I know yeah, but, so, but, so but let, let's say start, let's say your goal people start somewhere but right let, like things start somewhere. so let's say that you wanted to have the goal to do something with mile by mile to read one hour per week right no I get where you're coming from with that I just think like when it comes to numbers on a scale that's where it starts to get to like and not everyone's gonna have an eating disorder or get to that place but yeah. i think numbers on a scale are I don't so think, objective i don't think food is is the uh, unlocking mechanism for me <clears throat> like not eating yeah it's not that i i hear what you're saying and i know a lot of people struggle with eating disorders uh i job do you struggle with an eating disorder tell us no okay so then that's why i feel confident offering this for him i'm not saying this is blanket advice for everybody yeah, right yeah, yeah. and if you, you could make this goal for anything like i said read it you could pick any number of i'm just saying things. not everyone like people who have or, or start with or whatever with eating disorders like they don't they aren't born with it right like something triggers that mindset to start to i just have an all mindset. or nothing disorder yeah yeah uh, that's my that's <clears throat> well, my obsessing thing obsessing like, over things is part of what goes into that sort of shit well but i just so like there has to be he's saying that there has to be something there has that, to be a consequence to right. not achieving yeah. a goal. I like right. what you're saying about like if I don't do the two hours of yoga a week, like if I don't achieve these things. Yeah. It's just the number on the scale thing for me is like No, but mm. that but he, but so, this, so but I'm talking to him. Right now. I would me. never advise that for you or if you think that you struggle But with, what I'm saying uh, is not everyone is someone who's had an eating disorder. People are people that don't have them and then to get me, them. He is talking to me. Yeah. So that's 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 the the, the thing if you're listening to this Zach, Zach understands it's not a blanket statement. I understand it's not a blanket statement. He's talking to me. <laughs> and, and Also, I, in a society I, I where, mo- where most people die of overconsumption, I think... Uh, I do am an overconsumer of food. I, for heart, sure. Heart disease but, is the number but, one killer in the world. I, and, so I, and, and I... To say like, that we can't make a goal related to weight because disease, it might go too far in the other direction, yeah. I think is oversimplifying the problem. If you feel like you have a tendency toward that, then don't please don't do that. Also, by the way, drinking leads to cancer as well and so that's another yeah, part drinking that's, that's is part of my not family good for you either and, and, and like i think i think this is a massive culprit of like of like my 
larger like my ability to gain weight in the off season is sure. is yeah, of course i think i think you can tie a lot of it to drinking beer yeah. to drinking alcohol to to the to the eating that happens late at night while you are yeah. like drinking alcohol and all that kind of thing crushes and your sleep it totally, yeah, lowers and, your inhibitions yeah and, and my testosterone levels are lower than they've ever been just naturally at this stage you did seem less manly when you came in yeah i feel less manly <laughs> i have to over accentuate my voice to sound more manly <laughs> Yeah, uh, I so, get what you're saying. So yeah, if 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 that was something that I, I would advise, just toying with, like yeah, actually setting some sort of consequence and maybe setting it before you actually embark. And I would say go loose with the goals. Like don't come back with some sort of militant thing where like yeah, I have to work out 25 hours per week. I have to stay below 180. Yeah, I like, never think like I never think quite like that. I yeah. never I never do. I just know like I also I just get gratification out of like exerting. You know, sure. like if I'm when I'm not exerting any like multiple times a week, you know, several times a week, whatever, uh, I do feel lesser than yeah, <laughs> than my lesser than my the self that I want to be. Yeah. You know, I just think it's good to have an external motivating factor because like similar to like the fitness competitions we used to mm -hmm. do, like mm -hmm. utilizing competitions, another way of doing yeah. this. And it's yeah. kind of the same thing. You're just there's repercussions and uh, status and all these yeah. things. Um, I, th I think having something external to crack the whip can oftentimes be beneficial because Fucking just left here. TikTok, your, bro. Yeah. I've never your, made a reel in my life, by the way, yeah. even on Instagram. Yeah. I've never wow. made a reel. That's why it would be funny. That's why. I would, <laughs> so I'm not going to download TikTok, but I will make a reel on Instagram. I think you have to make it as painful as possible. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to oh, go and I think man. you have to become a TikTok kid. TikTok Your handle boy. can be TikTok Tom. TikTok yeah. Tom. Yeah. <laughs> Triple T. The tip, the tip of the TikTok for Tom. <laughs> <clears throat> Just the tip. Where were we? Somewhere cool, probably. Uh, getting off the CDT. <laughs> yeah. Tendinitis. Yeah. So that yeah. Was, so we're we're back two years ago. Let's f just fast forward. To our, I yeah. Guess, so so I, to I wanted year. to you know uh, redeem myself yeah. by hiking the CDT last year, um, and it felt like last year was the year because wait hold on, no this would be the ten year anniversary this year of hiking the CDT the first time. Uh, well, I guess tech, I, either way it doesn't matter. Uh, I wanted to hike the CDT last year. I, it is, it's the trail that I've you know, revered the most from a like wilderness standpoint. Um, it was the first long trail I did that like, I felt like I, um, like I evolved as a, as a hiker. Um, and uh, it, it was the first trail I did on under the handle, the real hiking Viking. It's like what, what got my start in like, like, I don't even know, just becoming a personality in this weird, you know, outdoor social media space. Um, and it's the year that I first met the mountain Smith boys up there, you know, and here in golden and, and it, like, it just, there's so much that has been wrapped around the CDT for me. I just was like, okay, I'm going to go do, you know, finally redo this trail because you know, the year you and I did the PCT in 2017, that was my third try in three years. I was just trying to get my triple crown and kept like, you know, various reasons kept like you know not being able to complete it whether it was fires or uh actually i, I got plantar fasciitis the one year um and it just it felt like last year was the year i was going to go do a full through hike of the cdt so letting go of that last year was tough man it really was um and and i do have this like like weird thing inside me that's like you got to still like do a full through hike to be like you know to feel legit or some shit and then there's the other side of it's like man you've done thirty five thousand plus miles like who the fuck cares if you're like do it in two different sections or some shit like that two, you know, in two different years yeah um I, I i i have let go of that like you know trying to live up to some like i don't know aspect of like uh the real hiking like <laughs> sure i don't know I mean, it still sounds so ridiculous yeah how much of that pressure is intrinsic versus extrinsic like how much of that is you putting it on yourself it's, it's entirely me yeah it's entirely me from like uh just like um well when you think about your like um like biggest um you know I just like people you look up to and, and whatever whether it's sports or or whatever like you you want to like measure up to some aspect of being great you know you hope to at least i mean they, like it, it happens with everything like like chance you wrote a book like 
like you you want you want the book to be great and like you you think about authors that are great and and like maybe like there's some there's some hopeful like idea of measuring up to some aspect of being an author right like mm -hmm. you you didn't just like say hey this is this is I'm just winging it and I only care about like uh, like what I, what I write no you like there are standards of like being an author right you know and there's standards of being um, anything in this world and like you, there's a certain hope that you measure up to you know and 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 then once you like achieve various aspects of like whatever you know being a podcaster a, a father a, an author uh, whatever it is like you start like feeling some of that just being like like brushed away because you like you don't have to always measure up to some like ridiculous ideal or something like that or a ridiculous like um unattainable star or whatever it is i i i i like i you know i go back and forth on like what that looks like depending on my achievement in the moment you know <laughs> like like when i say i'm leaving the cdt i'm like fuck like damn it like i i didn't do the thing i wanted to do and then later you're like okay well it's it's not as bad as you actually think it is because you already have achieved all these other things and you still did how many thousand miles last year yeah i mean uh, probably i mean actually i don't specifically know how many miles but probably 1500 or yeah. something like that yeah Maybe a little so when more. you aim for the stars, you still hit the moon. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. That right in the face. You should get an um, inspirational poster. <laughs> <laughs> um, Zach's becoming more and more of a dad. Every day. <laughs> I mean, it's it's true though. It's sponsorship. true that, that like you know it ebbs and flows on how you feel about your accomplishments. Yeah. Right. I don't know. You know, like one day you 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 wake up and you're like, oh man, I I I can't believe I've made it this far. And then another day you wake up and you're like, I can't believe I fucked that up. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> so usually the latter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know, man. There's no, there's no like perfect like uh, you know. It's just not like here you are and you're constantly like good to go for the rest of your life. Like sure. it does go up and down on how you feel about your accomplishments. But like if you, I try to like put it in perspective and like like where I like <laughs> there was in 2000 you know M March of 2013 and I remember my first 15 mile day and being like hell yeah motherfucker like big fucking day to day you know <laughs> I made it <laughs> and it was like the first week yeah sure you know <laughs> and you're like I'll never do a 20 mile day yeah, ever yeah. You're like it doesn't exist in your like like warped like mindset of of what through hiking is or just backpacking is yeah you know, and then before you know it, like you, you just everything shifts and changes and and you're allowed to like, I don't know, I, like I'm to myself, I'm still just like a dude who like f figured out how, that he liked backpacking, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> and and but to like a lot of other people that I don't even know. There's like you are like an inspiration to to like one day I hope to like at least go on my first walk and I, every year I get a chance to like live somebody's fucking dream, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like that's, I mean, and it, and it is my dream too. Now, it, like every year, it's my dream to go and do something that fulfills my spirit and like I have to like I've been doing it every fucking year for. 11 years now or whatever what's it's 20 yeah 11 years mm -hmm. i've been doing it every year and i like i can't for i can't let myself forget that like it is somebody's dream to do like one of these things that i get to do every year yeah and so it's okay to like not bat a thousand on these adventures too sure. right I'm gonna throw it totally is okay i'm gonna throw I'm a telling myself that right here. now yeah <laughs> how do you how do you manage because I know you've got a magnetic force on the home front. You've got a girlfriend, and now you've got a puppy. Mm -hmm. How do you manage the expectation of these massive scope adventures with also maintaining a home life? I have I have two lives. I have two two distinctly like different lives that I lead, um, and that is a challenge. Um, it's a big challenge, quite frankly, um, especially like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for eight eight of the eleven year, well, so yeah, eight ish, uh, eight ish of the eleven years um, that I've done this, I was I was intentionally homeless. I and I don't know of a better way of putting that, like not homeless, like from a I always I always had a home and a 
plenty of places that I needed to have a home as far as like family, friends, whatever. Um, was always somebody was always willing to take me in no matter what part of the country it is. But I didn't have like rent to pay and I didn't have, um, you know, uh, emotional connections to go to anywhere where the, like somebody else was waiting for me and needing me. Um, and it, it plays a, a, a very, it's a very large variable on, on like what I have to consider. Um, and, and, and yet I still every year have very large aspirations of, of doing the thing that makes me feel most fulfilled, you know? So give us some of the highlights from the stretch north of Golden Lakes, obviously before you bailed. Dude, it's just so burly from like a physicality standpoint. Yeah. And and just the amount of boulders. Once you get to Alpine Lakes Basin, man, we had... Yeah, we camped right on Alp- at Alpine Lakes Base in the lower the lower part. There's a, um, I want to say it's like just past the fortress, um, and it's just you. It's just tedious talus work, just you know, like it, it's so hard on your body at the end of the day, especially when you've like been doing it all day, and you just you just want to walk, you just want to walk. Yeah, you don't want to like. You're like you're like it's like it feels like you're swinging on a jungle gym. Yeah, is what like your your whole body needs to be like in tune to every move. Yeah, every movement. <clears throat> all right, and then when you you start it's mentally exhausting. It's and it, you don't get a chance to just you don't have reprieve, which is the like the the, I mean, the accomplishment of it is is that it's so fucking hard. Yeah. That you and it's so beautiful on top. I mean, obviously, it's the it's the Wind River Range. It's arguably the the most pristine, beautiful, you know, alpine range that we have in the lower forty eight. I, I I personally feel like it. It's it, you know, given how close the Sierra Nevada mountains are in proximity to like major cities, mm-hmm. like you just don't see anybody out there. Like even if you're doing the Sierra High Route, like you might you might have more you might see more people on the Sierra High Route than you ever will see on the Wind River High Route. Mm-hmm. Like we didn't see any, like anybody that I recall like uh, you know at least doing the route. Yeah. Um. So it's just such a pristine place, and and those those peaks are just you know monolithic um, slabs that you just see in all directions. And of course you're walking on glaciers in some at some points, like yeah. literal glaciers. Um. Yeah, we just, we just, you know, every every turn around like a, a mountain shoulder or an alpine lake, you just see something else that just like explodes your mind. Um, and but but as far as north of you, like we had to, cl- we you know we broke out the ice spikes and we're climbing alpine high alpine lakes pass, and it's just, you, you know, one wrong step and you go sliding. You know, <laughs> so you'd say that traction and an ice axe are necessary. Did you have both? I don't think I. I don't think I did not bring an ice axe. Okay, but you had spikes. I had. I brought micro spikes. Yeah, I did. And you would say that. That's I was necessary. very happy. I brought micro yeah. spikes. And for you to say that, that's a big thing. Cause... And I've done it. I did it without micro spikes and an ice axe the first time when I did the Adventure Allen route, and it's specifically that same. Um, and this was a lower snow year it, this last year that, than, than what it was the year that I first did it. Um, the first year that I did it, I did it without micro spikes and ice axe. And I, I don't, I did not feel comfortable. Yeah. And this is, again, this was a lower snow year, snow year last year. And I still brought them and I was glad to have had them. Mm. And it was the only time I broke them out. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just. Would you bring them regardless of the month? Like, is this like a through the whole season type of thing you'd carry? Um, I think it, it's 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 a hard it's a, that blanket statement. Maybe it's smart to say that for for the, the people listening, um, but it's certainly dependent upon the type of year it had, the type of year it had snow wise the ma- the mountain range and your own personal um, comfort level. Um, you know, if you if you're going for like an FKT, of course you're probably not bringing them. Yeah. Um, you know, but you know one wrong slip i mean it's, it's, it's all it takes is one wrong slip and then you're crash careening into a a pile of rocks and before you know it, you got a broken leg and before you know it you're the type of person that is hitting the sos button yeah you know 
<laughs> and, and this is a glacier, not a snowfield. So it's reasonable to assume. No, no, that, that, that particular pass is a snowfield. Oh, it is. On the other side, you start contending with some glaciers. Got it. Um, well, on the specifically on the Adventure Allen route, you start contending with glaciers. But when you go up and over, um, uh, and this is not the route that I took at the, on the fifth day, but the fifth day that they took on the Skirka route, you go up and over Gannett Glacier. Yeah. So... You know, depending on that, depending on what's going on there, um, you, I don't know if they use their ice spikes or not for that. Yeah. Uh, I think we'll save the additional Wind River High Route questions for when we've got. Yeah, yeah, we should talk. We should, I mean, the, the, the Wind River High Route can be its own, yeah. like, f lengthy conversation, for no sure. doubt. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got one last question before we get to our Kumo question, new segment. You mean this backpack back here? That, yes. Yeah, the Gossamer Gear Kumo. Uh, yeah. But this is actually, we're plugging you. Tell us about the Zerk, the updates. Uh, yeah, we, we've we got, um, and I, I don't know if you've seen the new Zerk. I, I'm not I think, is that the sure. baby blue? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Blue? And we've got, not only does, not only is there a new Zerk 40 colorway, there's a new Zerk uh, 20. Um, and actually, or is it a 20 or 25? I can't remember. I've, I've messed with so many different um iterations I've, yeah I've, I've seen so many prototypes at, at this juncture my brain is um a little scrambled on it um they're coming the new uh update is coming like in the next week or two i want to say uh it'll be hitting the website um which you know if you're listening to this i don't know in a month from now it should already be hitting uh at that point in time 25 mm -hmm. uh 25 thank you yeah um <laughs> you'd think i'd know oh so it's, uh, i'm trying to find the blue one on here it's not on the website yet at time of correct, recording. Correct, Got yeah, it. no. Time of recording, not on the website yet. It's been on a boat uh, for the last couple of weeks um, coming from Vietnam. Um, and we also have a fanny as well. So uh, it's exciting times. And, and there, the updates on that are a, a couple of different like attachment points. Like there's a daisy chain on either side of the, the large stuff uh, mesh pocket on the outside. Um, and uh, we, as I've already st stated, the, the, the colorway, um, we are, there's also like um, detachable um, webbing on both sides. There's two detachable straps on both sides as opposed to just like the old one. The old one was a, like a, a V uh, compression strap. Um, and now you have the ability to like unbuckle and, you know, like, you know, put a, put a foam pad on the side if you want or, or whatever the hell you want to put on the side. You can unbuckle and buckle something on that as well. Um, and there are... Um, uh, there is shock cord uh, in, you know, the, that outer pocket, the outer stuff mesh pocket on the outside of the bottle pockets. We added a little uh, compression cord there that you can tighten up. And if you, you know, use that, I personally use that for a lot of my garbage. And to kind of help keep that garbage contained, you can tighten that and cinch that up uh, pretty easily as well. So updates there are, are fun. The 25 liter is a little bit, tiny bit stripped down. Uh, not, not, not as much of a rigid foam pad on the back so it's more, maybe more like you know for like a day hikes peak bagging an overnight if you are really dialed in um with your with your gear um but it's it's just a little bit lighter and obviously smaller volume uh yeah. and then the fanny pack uh you know i really was really pushing to call it the jerk but we just called it the zerk fanny <laughs> instead <laughs> uh, I don't even know if you know this, but the discount code that Mountain Smith gave us for your pack is bananas. They gave us forty percent off. Fuck what? yeah! yeah. So uh, I don't know if it's still going to be active when this comes out. I'll just say it just in case it is. But it's Trek Zerk twenty four, and that's forty percent off the entire Zerk lineup, that's including awesome. the uh, trekking poles. Hell yeah! And by the way, the trekking poles. Uh, another update coming with that at some point in the near future. We're working on a uh, three segment telescoping, um, so you can. Uh, get that cinched down a little further as far as like putting your pack and not having so much stick out. Um, and those car, our cur current carbon poles, uh, the andesites, uh, which are, you know, are, are, are mine, my, you know, my, my version of what I, what I would, and I use them all the time. Um, they are basically half off the competition. They're like, uh, it's like a hundred bucks for a set of uh, andesite carbon fiber poles. Damn. Hundred bucks, and and that's literally well, get an extra forty percent with the code. Yeah, that, that is an that's free. They're that's, paying you to take the polls. That is an unbelievable. We, we don't pump them hard enough. Like those polls. Yeah. I, like I, bro, I, pump I, the pole. Pump them. You pump gotta the pump pole. that pole real hard. Uh, pump it. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, um, a, a carbon fiber is like you know you get a black diamond or any other brand out there. You're paying a mint for a carbon pole. Yeah. Um, and these are. 
Um, and my personal, I used all the other carbon poles out there, Lakey, um, you know, like I said, Black Diamond, Gossamer Gear, whatever. And I have broken all of them. I've shattered all, like every single one. I have never shattered a carbon uh, shaft uh, from Mountain Smith on the andesite pole. I've not, I've not done it. I've broken like the, some tips here and there. Mm -hmm. Those are replaceable. But just the tip. Just the tips. That's it. Yeah. Not the not the shaft. <laughs> you just break the tip. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I, I like it, they, we do not advertise enough how good these andesite poles are. I'm, yeah. I'm not even shitting you. Yeah. And of course, uh, they're they're cheaper than the competition by a long shot. And if you can get this 40 percent code, good good on you. Like they're they're yeah. the shit. I. I will reiterate, I'm not sure if the code is still active as the airing of this episode. So uh, reminder to you guys to listen to the ads because some yeah. of these things are just a blip on the radar. Uh, Chance, will you do us the honor of a new segment? Yes. So we are doing the Kumo question. This is because we have Gossamer Gear on as a lovely sponsor of the pod. I was also recruiting you to actually physically grab it. You don't want me to introduce it first? Oh, you can. Okay. Um, I, so was gonna, I was going to do that so we could time it up, but now okay. I'm distracting us. I'm going to kick it over to Zach. He's going <laughs> to talk us through what this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're just doing a new segment. Uh, th thank you to Gossamer Gear for all of the support. We're doing a Kumo question with our interviews, which is basically just a very oddball question. So I think there's a couple of backpacking related questions in our list, but most of them are just as random as can be. Uh, we, for those of you who watch this on YouTube, we've got a Kumo displayed here and we will be reaching, Chance will be reaching Java, into the pack. if you will reach into my bag. Oh, uh, shut up Chance, you old bag. <laughs> <laughs> and pull out one of my balls. Oh, this is a, a baggy set of balls you have here, John. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So, can I open this? Do you want yeah. me to open it? Can yeah. I read it? Yes. All right. This is a red ball red to ball. go with her, with her carpet that matches the drapes. Now we've got four in the room. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is the... Oh, this is perfect. Uh, this, what is the smelliest thing you've ever encountered? <laughs> um, if you would have been at my house yesterday, I would have given you the answer. Ew. Your shit stain undies? Just the... Uh, no. I heard you shit yourself. I did shit myself. All right. Uh, <laughs> no good story there, so I won't go down that road. That's a great story. Yeah. No, I, on day four of diarrhea, the smell really upped itself. I think it was the last hurrah. I had farts last night that offended almost everyone I was near. Yeah, of course. I've been around those. Your farts yeah. have woken me up out of a dead sleep. Yeah. Now, yeah. And by the way, I love my brand. Yeah. I love my own brand, okay? <laughs> so um, proud of every one of those. Yeah. Um, smelliest thing I've ever encountered, uh, Cuckoo's Zombie Feet. <laughs> um, on the Sierra High Route, yeah. Um, hands down, the like grossest. And we were sharing a tent on that too because I didn't want to bring one. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I love I love that storyline with me that keeps coming up with <laughs> picking other people's tents. And but this is the time I was in somebody else's tent where they smelled bad, yeah. so I had nothing to complain about because it wasn't even my tent. Uh, at least you had something to complain about when I'm shitting next to you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, you woke me up with your fart and not the sound. <laughs> yeah. I woke up to the smell of it. Ugh. Like it was like thick and hot. Poop smell yeah. filled your nostrils <laughs> yeah. and you were awake. This is in the middle of like tw tw 12,000 like, feet in, yeah. on the Colorado yeah. Trail in the middle of September yeah. and I'm getting woken up by your hot fart. <laughs> it's like it's like Will Ferrell waking up after being tranquilized. Like, <laughs> uh, You're crazy, man. You're crazy. So uh, Cuckoo had a foot fungus. <laughs> um, and, and it, and it uh, transferred into his shoes. And I'll tell this story as quickly as possible. But um, essentially, we, uh, we, we, we got to, I think, M Mammoth. Um, and we we're going down into Mammoth um, on the, is it, what's, it called? what's the, the place up on Red Meadows. Red Meadows. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, shout out to all the Red Gingers out there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, we took the bus down. All right, it took the bus down, and I had already like been living with this smell. Like, like I, he's hiking ahead of me, and I am catching the downdraft from you know the high country. The cuckoo's above me, and I, I'm smelling his feet from like yards away, like dozens of yards. Like it just it, it's such a all encompassing stench. It's like like picture like like mildew. I mixed like like mildew is like a nice smell compared to this but it's like <laughs> like that's the base of this as well because his our feet are just constantly wet out there too yeah um and he, he i don't know honestly of all my years of hiking i have never had bad smelling feet and i'm it's not the kind of thing where like you you don't you know you walk around like your shit don't stink i have never had bad smelling feet mm -hmm. i just i have not i can i could go hike for 500 miles hand you my shoe and you'd be like yeah this doesn't smell and I've made people do it. 
I, to prove it. I will have to do it yeah. to believe you. Yeah, sure, that's fine. And I, I don't I, know I if a, I want to. I got no problem with that. <laughs> I, I, don't know, I don't know why my feet don't smell. But I don't, and I don't care. But they don't. But it's because all of the stink excretes your body before it gets to your feet. Maybe, maybe that's how it works. Gravity. It, my butt is the release. Is <laughs> the valve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're on the bus da- from Red's Meadow down to Mammoth, and the bus driver, and a bus full of people who are mostly tourists and families and nice people that are smelling fine. Bus driver stops the bus. Stops the bus. Dead stop. Pulls over. All right. What's that smell? And he's like, it's offensive. <laughs> like, Cuckoo just looks at me and he goes, oh, God. And he's wearing his Crocs and he has his shoes, like, in his hand. Yeah. Like, I don't know why you didn't shove him into his backpack. Yeah. And he's like, I'm sorry. Like, embarrassed. He's embarrassed as hell. And he's like, I'm sorry. That's me. And the bus driver, like, pulls out a bottle of Febreze and puts it on the count, on, like, the, the, the dash. And he's like... You need to spray down whatever's smelling bad. And he's like, you need to do it now. And, like, everybody opened all their windows. Cuckoo walks up, grabs the Febreze, and, like, sprays himself, the shoes, everything down. And he had just bought these shoes right before we started the route. And he didn't, like, want to give them up. Yeah. You know, an expensive he's – not, he's not a sponsored hiker. He paid for that shit. Yeah. He's not a wealthy guy compared to, you know, people that are. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he – he as soon as we got off the bus down at uh, the top of the – the resort he just walks straight like again like just a defeated man and and walks straight to a a dumpster and just threw him in and he was just like fuck yeah (laughs) worst smell ever if you want the uh first person version of that story he actually tells that i'm sure he was on the podcast i'm sure uh episode 194 yeah yeah that's a good one yeah i lived through it did you do the bullet point uh, yeah, uh, thank you. That was our Kumo question. Use code Dingleberry for twenty percent off packs at Gossamer Gear. And by the way, the yeah. Kumo was my pack of choice prior to my time with Mountain Smith. Yeah, you used it on the entire PCT. I remember people being like, "You're through hiking with that thing!" Like yeah. everyone couldn't believe the fact yeah. that you were using that thing. It's a thirty-six liter pack. I've actually never used it. I've, Conscious used I it. I did that on the foothills trail. I did the entire Arizona trail with that pack as well. Yeah, I mean, I've done I've done more than that. I've done. I've done a lot with the, the Kumo. Great pack. Love Gossamer Gear. Great yeah. people. Yeah, agreed. Shout out to Jersey. Uh, cool. Well, let's kick it over to Patreon. Uh, we want to talk a little bit more about the reality TV show stuff, get a little bit more into the nitty gritty with that, and uh, maybe dive into how you're managing a relationship at home while doing all these things. Ugh. Why? Uh, Patreon.com <laughs> slash Backpacker Radio if you want to hear the last part. Uh. Okay. We're going to rearrange segments here a little bit. We've got Jabba for a few more minutes. So we're going to skip the Trek propaganda. We're going to go directly to the question of the day, which is. Okay. So I'm on a bunch of Facebook groups. Yeah. And they talk about like random, like asking anything type questions. I joined them for the sake of prompting thoughts for this segment. Sure. I think other people asking questions can prompt a lot of thoughts. This one I did not expect to see. It said, men, have you ever been fingering a girl and felt a poop on the other side? Mm-hmm. And I wasn't sold on setting this as a question of the day yet. I thought that was silly. Yeah. But then I saw the first two comments and someone else said, the real question is, can y'all feel the poop on the other side of the wall when you're doing the do? And someone commented back, yes. (laughs) So now my question, because this was like terrifying for me. Like imagine you're a girl and you're about to have sex with a guy and you've got a full butt of poop and you haven't (laughs) pooped. The thought that they, with their penis in you, can feel that you haven't pooped is horrifying to me. So I, I need call to horse know. shit. I do too. Is this guy lying when he says yes? Yes. I, I, well, no. Here, here's what or I. Or he's got the most sensitive I, penis tip of all. No, time. I don't think he's got a sensitive penis tip. I and if he does, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I call horse shit from the standpoint of like you must have inside information. Literally. Literally. Like he knows what to look for. When no, he's no. I think there. he knows that. I think. I think maybe. She's already said mm. I have uh, to take a poop, yeah, or something like that. Like, like there's zero chance. Like, uh, this is listen, so reassuring. Listen, listen, to me. listen, <laughs> listen, listen. I'm not remotely trying to say anything other than the fact that I have experience. <laughs> I'm not a virgin. I'm not a virgin. Congratulations. I have had plenty of it, <laughs> and no, you've never. Okay, this- no. And, 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 and that's both with the finger or the penis. All right? This Zero. guy saying yes Zero. really, like, scared me. Uh, and by the way, if he's feeling that, 
it's just there's something wrong with her. Like, Not him. Th- th- there's like a there's something wrong with the amount of poop that is backed <laughs> up that is protruding past the wall. Well, I was thinking like, how thin is this wall? I'm not like, a doctor. Like, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. Is this like tissue paper wall and he's touching it with his pee and well, he can just like l- feel listen, every? L- listen, have you ever? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Heck, okay. I, I've had a I've had a finger in both at the same time. Like you can feel that, but like there's not a poop that's just sitting at the wait, precipice. Wait, wait, when you've had a finger in both, can you feel your fingers in both? I'm not trying to make the feeling <laughs> connection happen, but you but can. But like there, 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 it, yeah, yeah. You mean like you, know, you have a dick in the, in the B <laughs> and a finger in the B, and like it, it, you might catch the 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 you know the the <laughs> a little bit of like like movement between the two now but like a poop isn't a fucking bone what about a, if it's a like finger a really or a boner one. a poop isn't like like ready to like l- i don't know like rub up on your dick like that like it's it's <laughs> it just feels normal because because a poop is supposed to be like be there it's not like a, d- a dick or a finger which isn't supposed to be there technically speaking you know what i mean yeah. as far as like feeling between the two uh chance let me flip the tables on you a little bit Prior to getting intimate with your fella, have you ever had the sensation like, I have to poop, but now's the time? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, there's definitely times I'm counting down the minutes till I can go poop. You know? <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that during butt sex? Well, it's, or? No. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. But sometimes it's like... What? You know, I thought this would be more fun than it is. Actually, I really have to poop, and that's all I can think about right now. I can't get into the moment. <laughs> have you ever, uh, either of you, um, and then I'll give my answer when you're done, um, farted during sex? No. Thank God, no. Be probably, honest. We should probably save this. I Not swear. even drunk? We should I probably swear. save this for a triple crown. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure yes. I'm sure yes, but we'll save. Save for a triple yeah, crown. Yeah, I'm yeah, not going to yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, that's the case. <laughs> um, okay, so we know that chance has had ammunition in the chamber <laughs> during intimate times so it, it is D- hold on conceivable. D- D- does it poop is- affect your ability to have pleasurable sex you're uh, i've, you have I've your never mind. once been like i hope this is over soon because i have to go poop i've never oh but it's because you're 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 clenching so hard that you, and you don't want to poop near or around yeah but i think sexy when, time. i think when you've got a full tank back there and like something else is added in it just like yeah we're not, not ta- we're not taking we're not taking anything yeah, in you guys, guys. Are taking. you're taking in and it's a fucking some guys your, are taking things in. yeah well I, i'm saying zach you and i, I, are th- not I would find not right it very specifically or not right i apologize for anyone who thought that i meant no guy i would find it very hard to believe that like girls who are sexually active with males have never had a time where they're like wow I didn't realize I had to poop but now I realize I do Mm. and now my mind can't not think about that I was just thinking like if you thought you were on the precipice of this that you'd be like I have to go take care of business and then are we we about to talk about 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 you're not you're not thinking (laughs) You don't think about it going Chance, into it, and blanket. then you realize, and you're like, sure. no, ew. Ew, shut up. Okay. It's not ew. ew, unless you get off to one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> have we satisfied the answer to this question? I think so. I think I'm not nearly as satisfied as I wish I would be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this will be a fun <laughs> social media post. <laughs> I don't know how we can post it with keeping it within Instagram Kind of like the Wisconsin episode. Never going to see the light of day. <laughs> we haven't really posted segments on Instagram in a while, so I this think might we might be, be safe on that. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this let's go to the triple crown. This is me, obviously, and this was spurred by an interaction I had with my son the other day. This is the triple crown of funniest farts. You can take this in any direction that you want. I'll start with mine because this is the thing that spurred it. But uh, I'm so happy that I've got a toddler now that I get to do this. And I taught him the other day about pulling fingers, oh, and when you can actually yeah. time hell your finger yeah. getting pulled with a fart he thinks it's the funniest thing in the uh, world by the way it is it is so funny still, so like now as an adult day, he'll come he'll come up and like sit on my lap and like take my hand and like pull <laughs> my <laughs> dad he thinks i can like do it on command he now thinks he, it's like a button that you I push to get control my out. dad's poop yeah, yeah. <laughs> so just objectively very funny oh yeah farts are funny yeah. as hell and that's a, the finger pull is a good one yeah, no it's a great one all right um so like you can go in any direction that you want um it, this is a very okay, broad listen, category. Listen, I, so when I asked it, and you know, a few minutes ago, I'm gonna tell you about my funniest fart. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. I'm in college. It's my first like girlfriend that I've ever told I've loved. She was a virgin. 
okay? And not, not, not a virgin in the moment, but when we started dating, she was a virgin. So yeah. like, you know, and she's the sweetest girl, has a state trooper father who's a, like a like a hardcore Christian. She comes from a hardcore Christian family. Like, and I had this like beautiful, like like innocent woman. And like, you know, and we were in love, like we were, you know, like that's, that was like how that went. Mm-hmm. Um, and her mother invited us both, her mother and father were divorced. Her mother invited us to um, my first NFL football game, Pittsburgh Steelers, her family's from Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Steelers against the Buffalo Bills. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my first NFL game was Ben Roethlisberger's rookie year uh, against True Bledsoe. His final year at Buffalo, and they were like fight. They were clawing and digging for a playoff spot. All right, this is 2014, I want to say. Um, and we had our own hotel room. Her mom got us our own hotel room. And I'm 21. She's like 19. All right, and <laughs> I had been like drinking all day, Buffalo style, like fucking like craziness. Like people were puking at the fucking stadium in front of us because Buffalo fans are fucking insane. Um, <laughs> and, and like we're having sex and I've been like eating fried food and beer, drinking beer all day. And, and it's not our first time having sex, by the way, just, but, and I, <laughs> I'll never forget this moment. All right. Sweet, beautiful girl farted in the middle of it. Like, I mean, ripped one. I mean, like, <laughs> unintentionally, like, couldn't hold on to it any longer. I bet it's, she had to poop. It's, no, me. No, me. You farted. Me. You, I thought you said she farted. No, I said, I, I'm just saying she's sweet and, like, perfect. And okay. I'm just this fucking animal. Do you remember the position? I mean, I was missionary at the time. Um, and, <laughs> and I had to, like, go of the fucking real. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Been holding on to it all day. <laughs> Fart. All right? <laughs> like, like, you don't, like, like, I'm still, like, self-conscious as a 21-year-old at this point in time. Yeah. Like, I'm not just me as I am today. Yeah. I am a, like, I have the most beautiful, like, you know, precious, like, angel with me, and I, I don't fart. <laughs> you know, I do not do that. All right? You know, that you remember those days? Sure. When you cared? <laughs> yeah. Do you? <laughs> do you? <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. I always care, Tom. I'm a lover. <laughs> <laughs> so I let one rip, okay? And she literally, this she had been drinking too, like whatever. And and she goes, what? <laughs> like audibly, middle of sex. And I go, what? <laughs> I played it off like it wasn't me. <laughs> like I was like, what was that? <laughs> and I mean, I thought I sold it as it wasn't me like whatever and and then it proceeded to be like the stankiest like <laughs> most she's puking as you're coming yeah. <laughs> well, your words not mine Zach I'm happy you were there uh, and to me that was the funniest part of all time and I've told that story so many times <laughs> as a good one as a good one I mean I, again I'm I my brain is locked into that moment for the, the rest of eternity as like Wow, I can't believe that <laughs> fucking happened fart wise. And I still rip them. I still during rip them like crazy. No, not during oh. sex. Just in general. Yeah. Like like I'm on a bash it with like how I fart yeah, these yeah. days, like in front of anyone. Yeah. So but at that point in time. <laughs> brutal. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. Uh, um there's some overlap of that on one of my lists, so I'll have to try to think of it. But are you fighting um, during sex also? I didn't know these were of ours. These they don't have of to be. Us? They don't have to be. Okay, I'm just I'm thinking of scenarios. Yeah. My first one I'll go with is when you're in a yoga class. I think when you're in a yoga class and someone farts, it is the funniest thing in the world yeah. because it is so mortifying for them. <clears throat> and you can usually tell exactly what direction it came from. And like everyone's trying to be like quiet and zen and serious and like oftentimes you're in an enclosed room with no windows and like they've got heat pumping through like that is not where you want to be locked in with someone else's fart yeah you got like a re- reiki and this person can't leave the, they reiki. can't yeah. leave the scenario like and the fact that you're not supposed to laugh makes it a thousand times funnier it makes it as harder to not laugh it yeah. makes it and harder to not laugh heard laughing <laughs> and i start to think about like because i haven't done this but i've been in classes where it's happened and i think about like the shame of like you have to now sit in the remainder of however many minutes are left in this class and the people on the mats directly around you all know yeah terrifying i think it's fucked up we have to feel shame for farting it is a 
uncontrollable bodily function, just like pissing and shitting. Yeah. You can control it. Sometimes there's a Yeah, you mean you can hold it in only yeah. for so long and then it comes out regardless. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's like, painful to hold it in. Yeah. You can leave the room. Piss is painful to hold. Yeah, you can leave the room. Painful to hold. Yeah, you can leave, leave the leave the room. Leave I leave the room thirty <laughs> times over the next like I don't know. I mean I haven't farted here. You haven't smelled it, and you're lucky. But I, if I'm gonna fart, and you want me to leave the room every time, and I'm like on a fucking no. Fart but I'm runner, saying like if you're saying it's uncontrollable, you can, <laughs> you can control some and things. They reek. <laughs> you can control. Some is that things. the joke? <laughs> Is it the joke that you didn't puke up <laughs> your pretty little lunch while I? F- <laughs> I don't know where we are. Shout out Tim Robbins. Yeah. Or is it Tim, Ro- Tim yeah. Robinson? Tim Robbins? Uh, Tim Robinson. You're right. Tim Robbins. Tim Robbins. Tim Robbins is, Robbins is, the, is married to Shawshank. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. My Since next friend. one, <laughs> gentlemen. Um, oh yeah, gentle. This, <laughs> this gentle one here. is from personal experience, and this is one of my more mortifyings. But my. My next one is going to be like an accident from someone in either like an authoritative or like a leading the room position. And I've told this one, you know this one, but when I was a manager, Mm. um, rest in peace, worst job I've ever had. um, I hated managing, but I had to run these like zoom and dials for my reps. My director made sure that like every day we were running these zoom and dials where I would just be in this like zoom room with these reps who like had to call people and like just had to like watch. Um, And... I thought I was on mute one day and oh I wasn't and I farted this is my nightmare. and like zoom orange outlines your box when you make noise <laughs> oh, yeah. and one of the girls on my team was like did you just fart Shut <laughs> and up. I like looked to unmute myself and I realized I was already unmuted and I was like no and like <laughs> denied till I died and but everyone knew you got a denial 5000 you got it um but I think like if someone's like if someone's giving a speech like if someone's giving like a talk if someone like anyone who's leading a situation you got to cough situation. while you do it yeah it's you got to cough while you do it yeah i thought i was it. on mute i thought i was in the comfort of my own silence um yeah so that was terrifying thank god it was like a team That's of a girls a tertiary but... safety protocol is even if you think you're on mute cough while you fart yeah yeah, I did. On it. a business call. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like, no, this was like, like, I would have to be in these Zoom, Zoom rooms for like hours of the day. Like, this isn't just like a 30 minute thing where I can. By like, the way, that's kind of work sounds like I should like kill myself. No. <laughs> All right. Like, it, my I, mental health was low at the time. Uh, yeah. That's <laughs> so. tremendously awful. All right. Quick break. Okay. We're back. <clears throat> Sorry. We're back. I'm confused did you what you did. Did you fart? No. I have to do. Hold on. <coughs> so I'm going to gaslight my whole team. Oh, come on. <laughs> That's from that exact same story. I know. Why do you have these on hand? <laughs> what is this fucking folder? Oh, he wouldn't be doing his job if he didn't have that on hand, okay? So I'm going to gaslight Stop! my whole team. <laughs> uh, emphasis on gas and the orange light. That was the joke. <laughs> that was the joke we made in the moment. I like it. Go listen the to underwear? all of our episodes if you want to find where that is. Play it again. Play it again. The underwear? <laughs> John shits herself. Guys, I am a Stop! piece of trash. Stop! <laughs> I am a piece of trash. I am. Yeah! Moving John's on. John's the old bag. <laughs> snake draft the snake right back around. It's your turn. Can we Pick just play Sean's the old bag real quick? Sean's the old bag. <laughs> that was so good. He has them all ready. He keeps them ready. He deserved to be ready. <laughs> Give me everything in your wallet. <laughs> By the way, that's not alive. That's not alive as fuck. That was live. I hate myself. Sean, do you hate Gap hearing yourself? Bitch. Yes, <laughs> I hate it again. so much. I'm going to take my gap tooth, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take my headphones off. <laughs> Stick my head in a hole. We're, We're not going through the whole catalog hole? right now. Jabba has You're places to be. We need no, to be respectful I'm good. of his time. I'm good. Take Play again. Play again. Shh, quiet. Like, couldn't you just put it in your poop hole? <laughs> <laughs> Guys! Folks, it's been real. Put it in your poop hole. <laughs> What's your next one? You. Me? Yeah. yeah oh, my problem. next one. Um, I would have to say anytime you're in church. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah. come on. It's like the yoga thing where, like, the yeah. less you're supposed to do yeah. it, the funnier it is. I mean. I've definitely, <laughs> by the way, and it's accentuated by the acoustics in the church, a depending on, yeah, the echo, but you need a, a wooden bench yeah. for the real echo to work. Yeah. Like if you have a, a cushioned, like, like velvet bench, like 
that's just going to get muffled yeah. and lost in the sauce. Hopefully, <laughs> if I had a nickel for every time where I was in a situation where I wasn't supposed to laugh and like the urge of suppressing the laugh just puts me into a laughing fit, like where yeah. I can't stop laughing, yeah. that would 100% do that yeah. to me. Yeah, I'm sure. too. And by the way, I'm a, I grew up as a church goer. Yeah. I've heard some parts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I've got a lot to pick from here. I'm going to go with I did this one in front of Jenna the other day and I got her to laugh with this is farting on the beat. So like you don't let the whole fart out oh, yeah. and you save it for like the downbeat. I, I forget the song, but like I was hitting the beat for like probably six beats in a row. And the fact that I made Jenna <laughs> laugh, because <laughs> she doesn't find <laughs> my farts that's, by funny. The way, that's I'm shocked that she laughed at yeah, Sphincter control is something you don't have. You perfect it over time. Yeah, no, I've been working on this. Yeah, of course. I've been training. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, question, do I get a third, right? I do? Yeah, yeah. So I, okay, cool. I got, I got one sure. more. Yeah. Making sure. I have a lot. Um, <clears throat> I have a gold, gold okay. situation for you folks. All right. My last one is, this is always the funniest for me. It doesn't matter the situation. Is any audible dog fart. Yeah, that's funny. Every time Harper laughs, every time Harper farts, they're f I've ne I never hear them. There's like, she's so coy about it, but every now and then I'll hear one. Like, and they look behind them like, so what was that? They're so rare. Yeah, and she'll, we'll make eye contact, and she's got this, like, oh, face on. <laughs> oh, it's the funniest, cutest thing in the world. Yeah. Audible dog. I would say a silent but deadly dog fart, not funny. But not funny. When you can hear it, the funniest. Because yeah. it comes with the eye contact. Especially when, they're, especially when the dog is surprised by its yeah. own yeah. butthole. Yeah. They're, they're like, oh, 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 what's oh. back there? And then they smell, and they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's your last one? Okay. So I, I'm going to like ask a quick question. Like y'all have seen the like videos online of like the husbands and wives, like they will uh, say the type of fart their husband is about to do. No. No, you not heard this? Not no. seen this? Oh, where they predict the sound. They predict, they predict the sound. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. oh, I'm it's going to be, a, it's going to be like a. Please yeah. don't talk near my phone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, and then, and then the husband will like do the fart. Yeah. Right. Well, that is. A call to a time in my life in high school um, me and a group of friends uh, and I was on the periphery of this there was a core group that I wasn't technically like part of the core group but I was on the periphery of it um, there was a group in my high school called the methane men and they made shirts and they like were <laughs> methane the methane men, men. <laughs> and they would fart like at all times in school and class, like what the matter of the situation, they would fart and they were always in classes together. Like they, they was, it was a group like effort to like, like make the most obscure and ridiculous sounding fart at all times in school. All right. And this like, this had a progression over like a couple years, like, and it got to the point where the like poop came involved. Right, no. you know, like poop, poop became like a thing within the methane men. <laughs> All right, they, they had shirts made where they, you know, like the, um, like the 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 diamond shaped like road signs where it's like you know like uh, children crossing or something like that, yeah. where it was a, a stick figure with like poop, like methane coming out the back, <laughs> like like farts, like that was what they would wear to school, and then their methane nickname would be on the back. <laughs> okay, this is I mean, so like, weird. Uh, it's actually fucking awesome. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So, and then it got to the point where they they would like film each other. They would make like videos about their methane and their poops, and like and like like legends would be made. <laughs> like like stories would be told based on these videos. All right. It was so, like a pirate right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm fucking serious. So there was, a, we had a, a, a short stop mart, like a gas station, like a coastal mart, like whatever. I don't know what like the gas station was where you guys grew up, whatever. Um, but they <laughs> bought like a, like a fucking like, um, like a chocolate Ben and Jerry's pint, ate it, then shit in it no. and tried to return Ew. it. And say, Hey, there's something wrong with my ice cream. And they tried to return a poop. <laughs> and they recorded it. And they recorded it. And this man Jesus. opened it and, like, <laughs> looked at the turd. Like, smelled it. <laughs> and they were like, they're like, smell this ice cream. They're like, this ice cream is disgusting. <laughs> like, we want our money back. Did they have to freeze it first? Or did they just Yeah, they froze it. it. Oh but it God. still smells like poop. I know, okay. I'm just wondering, like, oh, this is So, bad. that was 
fucking his like that video made the rounds. This is before like digital anything. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. it was like VHS. <laughs> <laughs> this is two thousand. That poor guy. Yeah, that guy is, is amazing in therapy to this yeah, day. Yeah, no doubt. Wow. <laughs> Hard one to follow. Methane men. (laughs) Shout out Lewisburg High, (laughs) Pennsylvania. Shout out 2000. Wow. Um, Okay. My last one, I've got one honorable mention. My last one, again, not from experience, but just another thing that I would find terrifying. Um, This is probably, well, this is more for girls than guys. But if you were to fart at the gynecologist, like when your legs are up in those stirrups and their faces in your hole. Feels like the most safe place, by the way. Huh? Feels like the a safe place. No, when your feet are up in the stirrups and her face is like in your. Cooch. Wait, 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 is it is it hers or his? Because if it's his, I get it. But if it's hers, like who cares? I don't want to fart in anyone's face. By the way, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why we're not connecting way, here. I do. I would think, the stirrup, doc. I would think that <laughs> that would be one of the rock. most mortifying places. Um, and it's also just like you guys in a room, like quiet. I would venture to guess that it would be embarrassing in some way, yes. But like, what if it was a shark? What if it was a queef? A shark queef. <laughs> All of, like, there's a lot of options that could be bad. What? Okay, so, so by the way, my... 3B would be a shart. Like, like where you're trying to, like, perform a fart and you actually shart, but, like, people witness that you did shart. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, I just did that in front of Jenna the other day. Yeah. yeah. And were you embarrassed? No, I told her. I didn't have to tell her. But like, I just were you pants. actually embarrassed in any way? No, we've both done that in front of each other multiple times. By the way, that sounds like a really weird kink you <laughs> two have. <laughs> It's the only thing that gets us going. Ah. <laughs> All right, honey. Well, I'm hard. Hurry up. <laughs> you got Let's make a seconds. fourth baby. <laughs> okay. Ooh, baby. Well, my honorable mention is, again, not something that has thankfully happened yet. But I think if I were to accidentally fart during a recording of this podcast, like mm. this has been a thought that's progressed as we've done this triple crown. You haven't? No, audibly. Like a, no, uh, like a, a, a one you can hear. Yeah. I think we... As a th- thruple. <laughs> if I were in this moment to accidentally let out a lo- lo- like a loud fart, this would be like one of the most mortifying places I ha- I have an for idea. me to have it happen with. I have an idea. And it's all recorded. I have an idea. And Zach keeps his audio clips, so he would keep a clip of it on audio and yeah. play it for forever. Yeah. And I'd have you in I, my face. I have a better making idea. Making funds. Let's fucking record our farts <laughs> for a future Patreon account. No. Thank you. No. Why not? I'm good on that. No, no, no. And then just use it as At a soundboard. At that point, like, give me an OnlyFans. Yeah. <laughs> soundboard. Soundboard fart material. But we have to, like, like we, like, state our, 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 like, farting intentions. So there's, like, audio clip before the fart itself. So you, you like, pull out your voice memo. You say uh, whatever the fuck you want to say. Like, oh, like, I'm going to, like, oh, I think I'm going to, might shit myself right now. And then you fart <laughs> and you laugh and whatever. And it's fucking funny. And then we say those. Get them, get them all together, and then soundboard them. I'm, I knew we'd get them too excited. I'm with out this on this. I'm very horny. I'm very horny. <laughs> I have to go. Yeah, bye. No, it, you know, it's just a joke. What's the joke exactly? <laughs> what do you mean? My farts don't sound anything like that. My farts are loud <laughs> and, and way reek. louder, <laughs> and they reek. <laughs> So what's the joke? <laughs> that I had a milder fart than I normally do? <laughs> All right, we'll end it there. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll hit the button and we'll take a time out. I mean, I'm serious about that fart shit. <laughs> <laughs> to the Trek propaganda portion of today's show, uh, this one is actually Trek propaganda and also backpacker radio propaganda mm-hmm. because this is Brianna DeSanctis becomes the first solo woman to complete the 6,800-mile American Discovery Trail. This is by Ariella Nardizi. Uh, not going to go into the article because this will be the subject of a <clears throat> forthcoming episode of Backpacker Radio. And I apologize for my voice. I missed a recent podcast because I was very sick and I'm still on the tail end of it and my voice is weak and pathetic. Just like you. Yeah. <laughs> my voice is just like me, weak and pathetic. Uh, mailbag, this is you. Okay. Zach, what? This is to you. this is specifically to you. Yeah, but I don't have a voice. I'll read it to Spare you. Spare me, yes. Zach, mm-hmm. I've got two kids, ages eight, girl, and four, boy. Wanted to give you one tip that has worked great for getting our kids into the outdoors. The biggest incentive, far better than candy in my opinion, 
has been having one or more of the kids' friends along for the hike slash trip. We started very small when they were very young, when they were young, very short hikes, ideally with a friend where they can just play in the dirt, pick up rocks, etc. If they have a non-adult friend with them, the creative play and fun with the experience really seems to shoot up. When my kids have a friend along, they end up hiking faster, need less breaks, and are in a much better mood. As they get more comfortable, you can extend the hikes, and now my eight-year-old absolutely loves going on overnight trips. We still don't hike more than six to seven miles or so in a day, but my daughter is already asking when we can go on another trip this spring. We're just south of you between Morrison and Chatfield Reservoir, so waiting until the overnight lows creep up a bit more in the first spring back for the first spring backpack. We're also planning an overnight raft trip on the Upper Colorado this summer with my daughter and one of her friends from school, which will ne- which will be a new experience for her. Just keep it simple at first, and you can introduce new things little by little. The kids will let you know what they are ready for. And if you ever need a non-adult hiking buddy, we're not far. Joe, Daddy Long Legs. Love this email very much. <clears throat> Tips greatly taken to heart. And we got a few emails. So I think this was in response to our recent Q&A episode because mm-hmm. we talked about hiking with kids a little bit. Uh, this has spurred me that we need to do an episode dedicated to hiking with kids. Mm-hmm. I know we've obviously had the through hiking families on, but I think maybe doing the subject in a more approachable way, because like not everyone's going to go off on a 2200 mile backpacking trip. Well, I was thinking about this the other day while I was listening to a podcast because I don't listen that often. I usually listen on commutes and now I work from home. So yeah. insert obvious things there. But I was listening to an episode of the Money, of K- Money with Katie show love that show and i was thinking about how like oh like i wish she had an episode on this or that and i know she has because i know i've listened to them before but i feel like sometimes i want to hear another episode on the same thing again where it's like i don't really want to go back and re-listen to that episode that i've already listened to and even though i know a lot of what she's talking about would be the same i kind of would still like that like for her to just do like a back to the basics and in my head when i was thinking about that i was like i guess that kind of applies to us too where we put a lot of stock into not repeating stuff yeah but now we're six years to kind in. of you know agree with what you're saying there even if we do have one where it's like okay we've well we've talked about hiking with kids before i think having a newer more like relevant to where we are right now in time yeah aspect to it uh <clears throat> even if it's similar content I think if I if I'm wanting that for another podcast, why would the not, same not work in reverse? Sure, yeah, uh, and I do expect that I'll have lots more hiking with kids. Probably more so Leo this year. Last year was tough because one, I was very sleep deprived, and also newborn re- rearing twins. newborn twins is a lot. So I anticipate getting out of the house more. So I should have more <clears throat> hiking with a late toddler, four year old. Uh, stories for you here soon but these are awesome tips greatly appreciated i'm always keen to what works for people so uh reach out to us we've got the mailbag link through the website uh, backpackerradio.com or you can just reach us directly at podcast at the track.co and daddy long legs thank you very much for the tips appreciate it uh five star review this is short i can handle it this is dad of dragons title poop story Tired dad currently pooping while being forced to play Barbies with my five-year-old. Hopefully one day I'll be able to poop in the woods instead. Is it weird that I thought of you two in this moment? Anyway, keep it up, Chance. You'll eventually get Zach to fire you. We've gotten close a couple times. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And if you guys want to have your review read on this podcast, head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave us any number of stars, just not one, two, three, or four. And we're still sending out stickers for people who leave us reviews, screenshot it, and then email us, podcast at thetrek.co. Super big thank you to our Chuck Norris Award winners on Patreon. That is Alex and Misty with Navigators Crafting, Andrew, Austin McDaniel, Austin Ford, Brad and Blair from 13 Adventures, Brent Stenberg, Brian Alsop, Fables. Christopher Marshburn, Coach from Marion Outdoors, Dane, Ish. Derek Cook, Eric Casper, The Friendly Ghost, Eric Hoffman, Greg Knight, Greg McDaniel, Jason Snaylor, Barely Knower, Liz Seeger, Patrick C. and Cialo, Spam, Timothy Hahn, Solo, and Tracy Trigger. Thanks. You can follow us at Backpacker Radio on Instagram and TikTok, at Backpacker Pod on X, Facebook.com slash Backpacker Radio. You can follow Chauncey. You can find me on Instagram at Juliana underscore Chauncey. I have resumed uploading my videos to YouTube. I finished the JMT. I am on the OHT. Um, and then comes the Foothills Trail. But I'm excited that I'm doing that again, honestly, because I think I burnt out from just like negativity for a while. And I feel really good about this. Um, and you can get my book, Hiking from Home, a long distance hiking guide for family and friends on Amazon. 
Appalachian Trials and Pacific Crest Trials are my books. Subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Follow us on YouTube. Hey, Internet. What's up, YouTube? We had a little bit of a technical glitch here again today. Yeah. Happens. I just got to, I've got to leave the camera here. Yeah. And it's, it's, I'm going to take home only the memory card today. I'm going to take the Foothills Trails. Well, no, because I got to put it onto my phone. Ugh, I'm going to bring a different camera next time. And I'm going to leave that Wait, camera Wait, why can't here. you just take the memory card? Because then I'll put it onto my computer and I like to edit using CapCut on my phone and using iMovie on my phone. I just, it's just easier. It, it's like, that's how I would edit on trail. Yeah. Um, and so to get it on my phone, there's an attachment on that, that I'd plug it into my phone. My phone's on such low space left that yeah. I can't just put it on now if I'm not ready to edit them yet. Um, so I've got to, I've just got to do the mental gymnastics of figuring out what works best for that. Set a reminder to charge the camera at 2 PM on Wednesday. Okay. Didn't make a sound, but I did that on my phone. You laughed when I wrote the plug in camera sign and I didn't see it. Yeah, it didn't work. Uh, and that's it for today's show. Thank you so much for listening and happy hiking. Bye.